Hello and welcome to Real Talk episode 83. I am here as always with my two wonderful co-hosts Cameron and Tyler. George unfortunately cannot be with us today. Um, I can't even remember what, what George is doing again. What's Isn't his today? birthday tomorrow? Like uh, yesterday for people Victoria's, listening? Right? Victoria's. Victoria's. No, Victoria's it's not was... his, right? No, it's We're not terrible friends. It's not Victoria's. I thought Victoria's was like... The thing is, he said he's going home for a birthday, but I, he didn't clarify it was his, but it's like one of those things like we've known him too long where we can't be like, oh, is it your birthday? This like, you know, it's kind of like awkward. Yeah. So I was like, no, I messaged Victoria on 4th of February saying happy birthday. So it was definitely. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I, yeah happy nice. birthday, George. If it's not your birthday, we suck. I've left it someone in George's family, one of the people. I don't know. <laughs> um, but we've got a pretty packed episode today. Uh, I'm going to be going over Civil War. Uh, oh. entire, got a chance. It is to- his birthday on Sunday. Happy birthday, yeah. George. Yeah. Everyone hey, spam the comments. Man. Happy birthday, he's, George. He's hanging yeah. out with Victoria. Okay. That that was my That's mistake. Kind of he's, turning, he's turning 30. Big milestones. So comment that. Is he actually? Is he actually no. 30? No, no but if we old. all just start saying like happy 30th, George. Like, yeah. Okay. So that's, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I was going to say I didn't think he was 30 yet. He's like, what, 27? 27? 27. Yeah. I'm 99% oh, yeah. sure is what he's turning. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pads episode today. We're going to be going so over. Old Civil as War. Fuck. <laughs> Come. Let me. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Civil War today. And then we're going to. Come. Did you? I'm assuming you didn't watch Fallout, did you? I don't think you did. No, I almost did. But no, I didn't, I I didn't like have it. any time this week for yeah. anything. So maybe I'll watch it next week. Um, yeah. I mean, but... I, think you'll, I think you'll like it. It's, it's a pretty interesting one. I can imagine you enjoying yeah. it, actually. Like, I didn't, gonna I didn't through... have service or anything. So. Yeah, fair. We're going to be running through Alex Garland's filmography, kind of his um, written stuff and also his directed stuff throughout his career. And we've got a bunch of new trailers. Obviously, CinemaCon was last week as well. So we've got a lot, a lot of news to cover from there. But first of all, how are we doing, Cameron? I don't believe... Cameron, you weren't on last episode, were you? No. Mm. You were sailing the seven seas. Think so. uh, yeah, I was, I was on the cruise last week. Oh, yeah, week. of course. You were last week. Yeah, yeah. So how's everything been? Uh, everything's great. Um, good cruise last week. So we went to the Bahamas. Um, we went to Nassau and then Bimini, uh, which is an island on the Bahamas that I'd never heard of. I've heard of Nassau, just never heard of Bimini. Um, and it was super, it was really cool because it was like you could see the island from end to end when you were standing on on the boat, like walking into on, on the port, walking in, uh, like super small island. Everyone had a golf cart instead of having a car because <laughs> there's just no need for a car in on that small of an island, which is hilarious. Um, but yeah, it was a really good good time. Emma had a great time. Bailey had a great time. Um, it's just very enjoyable. I don't. I the big where the did big it sail out happened, of? Was it like Florida uh, or somewhere? Jacksonville, gotcha, Jacksonville. Gotcha. Um, take my. I'm gonna take my time for, for my Purdue talk time now. Uh, great mm-hmm. season. Sad, sad ending. Um, in the in the Purdue season, like last year. If you go back to that episode last year, I was just pissed off because we lost horribly. Um, I was just pissed off and like embarrassed and like that this sucks. Um, but now this year, I'm just I'm just kind of bummed. It was a really great year. Made it all the way to the championship for the first time in like 60 years, but the first like real one. We we haven't made the championship um, or the final four. I don't think s- since it's expanded to 64 teams, so not even so like the real tournament, we haven't um, made it that far. And so this was the first time got over that hump. And I really thought it was the year got beat by the better team, just simply the UConn team. I had a lot of, I had a lot of belief going into it. Like, I think we can hang with them and we did for a little bit, but they are just, they were stupid good. Uh, and that, and that's, that's the bummer of it. So just kind of like, didn't do anything wrong necessarily just simply got beat by the much better team so um, the age-old sports fandom question would you have rather like not made it to that stage and faltered at the last moment or are you happy to be in the championship at least? no happy to be there at, um uh and uh, and yeah ha- happy to have went um it's just one of those things like it's it's to pr- purdue we're not a, we're, we're not a bad college basketball school by any means we're very good but never never really the best, never really making it to the, to the, we sh- should have made it last year and just, I don't know, we're, we're known for not doing great in the tournament and we got over that hump and I'm, I'm worried it'll be another 20, 30 years before we get back. Um, that'll be depressing, but we're supposed to be, obviously we won't have a national player of the year back to back again. I'm sure. Um, 
but we're supposed to be pretty good next year. I uh, just I'm wor- I'm worried we're just back to pretty good, and it's not it's not a. But I'll I'll still cheer them on. Go Boilers! My favorite yeah, sport on is, the bright is side. Spin zone. Years, if it takes twenty years for them to get back, that could be like pri- like Bailey's junior year at Purdue. Like, that could you, be you go that's with very, dad visit. That's very true. Yeah. Um, in two years, we're back. It's it's in Indianapolis, so maybe maybe like the fate has it that we just all of a sudden do really well. And maybe now that we've got the big thing was like Purdue's had two coaches in in forty five years. Um, I think like we've had two coaches, so we're very consistent. But the f- previous coach had never never made the Final Four. Matt Painter had uh, had never made it before this year. That was the big hump. Maybe now we just every once in a while get a lucky run because before it felt like we'd never get a lucky run because we could never get over the hump. Even when we were supposed to do it, we couldn't get over the hump. Maybe now we've gotten over the hump. We can do it. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Um, but but. Yeah, just bummer ending. I did have service on my phone, so I could like I are not service. We bought the Wi Fi on the cruise, so I could watch that. Why? Wow, that's um, pay for. Yeah, dude, it's like a hundred bucks for the week, and you can only use one uh um uh, one device at a time. So like, if Emma wanted to get on the Wi Fi, she'd have to like kick it's me off. And, yeah, Royal yeah. Caribbean. Uh, think, uh, uh, Carnival. Oh, Carnival. I guess they're both yeah. they both just nickel and dime you left and right. Yeah, so yeah, the same exactly. Way. Exactly. Um, and they also automatically charge tip, um, uh, which is fine, but I don't know. Then Work asking for another tip is a little is a little whack in my opinion. They like they au- is that normal in the they US? Automatically upcharge twenty percent. No, it's not normal like it at a restaurant or anything, but I guess it's normal on a cruise, maybe they automatically charge you twenty percent extra as a tip. I just know um, and then and then ask for more of a tip. And I'm like, oh, that <laughs> feels a little that feels like in, in the uh, US, like tips are more of like a yes, tips are more frequent here because I mean, I tip pay fair wage, yeah, I tip, so but, that's but you like, the waiters and waitresses in the US like rely on tips, right. to tipping called like yeah. tipping is definitely huge in America, yes. but it's weird. Like you're saying, Cam, when they automatically upcharge you because like when I was at that bachelor party and you like pay for a group of 20, like they like big parties, they automatically include in the bill like mm-hmm. 18%, 20% upcharge, but then mm-hmm. it's like you can add more gratuity and it like feels weird. Like signing the bill being like, well, they included not it. Adding but, like, the gr- I feel that. Like, oh, I, I literally put like 3% extra. Cause I'm like, it feels weird giving nothing. Like I know I'm already giving 20%, but like I didn't add it myself. So that's yeah, just how yeah, bad yeah. tipping cultures like messed with yeah, the yeah. chemistry of brains in America. I scummed it. I didn't, I didn't give an extra tip. I'm so, I'm sorry to the, I mean, but you should, like, they you already paid the tip. So, like, yeah. It's fine. And it's not like, it's also not like, which you have the option, like you could sit on, you could sit by the pool all day and there will be people walking up to you, get like, they'll get you drinks from the bar. I never did that. Like I walked up to the bar, got a drink. They made my drink. I appreciate them for doing that, but it's not like we went above and beyond for, for this drink, you know, Was and, it inclusive uh, like drinks wise. Um, so you, you, there's packages you have to pay. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. So there's package. We did not pay for the package. So we had to pay for each pay individual for, drink because the cruises are weird where, which it makes sense. But if I buy a package then Emma has to get that package and so does her mom. So we had to yeah, pay. Yeah. It's like 400 bucks for the drink package in total. It's like 50 bucks a day or something or 60, 70 bucks a day, something like that. Um, and so it would have been an extra $1,200 and we ended up spending a good amount on alcohol, not nearly that much, like yeah, not, yeah. E- not even close to half of that much more than yeah. like, you know, I'm happy to spend on alcohol, but yeah, it's, it's one of those things you have to drink like six or seven drinks a day to get your money back, which maybe if I were alone and it were a bachelor thing, yeah, I could do that and black out every day and just go on but i also i had my kid we had our kid with us and you know it wasn't wasn't one of those trips but it was very good he, bailey was like the star of the cruise um he was probably one of the youngest on the cruise they did a baby race baby bailey walsh one and oh in baby races like <laughs> legit winner um and then they gave out uh completion prizes and participation trophies and then i was a little bummed, pace, but yeah. understandable for for ages two and under um but <laughs> bailey walsh one and oh in baby races um would you do a so cruise can, again yeah i like cruises like and it's, it's, it's nice like one? huh if that wasn't your first one no it was i went on like one in high school um but okay. cruises much better actually they're probably they're probably very fun they are very fun when you're not 
drinking age, but um, because I was 17 when I went on it, so I wasn't even able to drink like in the Bahamas or anything. But cruise is definitely better when you can drink and stuff because it just unlocks more stuff. Piano bars, so fun. Piano bars are awesome. There was a piano bar on the cruise. We were like the youngest people there by 30 years, but you just was it a request a bu- piano bar or just a piano bar? Just piano bar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I've never been to a piano bar or to a dueling piano bar. Um, but very fun. You just request a song, he sings it. Yeah, he just knows all these oh, different okay. songs. Yeah. Like it, it, it was awesome. Um, but it is it, it's one of those things like we went we went two or three times. Like Emma went three times because she went on the night with her mom the night of the um national championship. So I stayed back and watched that, obviously. Um, but uh she went three times and they they play like the same songs basically every night because people just request, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody and Piano Man and all those, which are fun, fun songs, but they play them you know the same t- every every night so you can only go so much i would guess but it was very fun the two nights we went it's, it's a good time you get to hear some good music and just kind of sing along and get some drinks but nice. yeah it was a very fun cruise very glad did to you get be back, back like friday got back technically friday yeah so we landed at like 12 30 and like midnight yeah, um midnight morning. 30 um so technically friday morning and then i back at work 7 30 a.m friday Oof. morning so yeah Absolutely. i should have taken the day off but i'm traveling for work this week um so i like i didn't want to miss two consecutive weeks so i i came back for the friday just as like a, i check my email and, and you know stuff like that but it, where are you going for work good. this week or is that proprietary no kansas city i don't think i've ever been to kansas city um so it should be good it'll be Damn. interesting middle middle america seth like even more middle america i know where kansas is i okay. know my there geography. We go. don't worry there we the go. chiefs yeah. chiefs kind of put kansas city on the map i feel like yep yep they did that's fair um but it, it'll be a good work trip um so i probably won't be able to watch a ton of stuff this week but uh maybe have more time for uh more time for TikToks. I don't know. We'll see. Anytime, anytime you travel, I feel like you have a little bit more time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I like, I like that you can, t- I can take Monday as like a travel day, even though I'm not leaving till like five. That's always nice, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so kind of like a day off work. But yeah, excited, excited to travel. I get to, I, I have a couple, you know, good work friends that I'm going with, so it's nice to hang out with them. Um, it's nice to not be alone while doing it. Um, but yeah, excited for that. Nice, nice. Tyler, how's uh, how's your week been? You uh made a new friend in uh in David. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. That was a highlight of the week for sure. That was on Monday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess the eclipse happened this week too, but didn't didn't do anything here. So, Cam, did you get to see any eclipse action? Were you no, not really. Yeah, point? yeah. It wasn't it wasn't very popping on the cruise. So kind of a bummer because I saw a bunch of pictures and stuff, you know, but mm-hmm. doesn't really do it justice. Yeah, it's some FOMO from seeing because obviously we used to live in Dallas and Dallas was in the path of totality. I saw some downtown Dallas shots of like complete darkness. It looked awesome. But in yeah. Phoenix, it got Indiana was peak. Yeah. Oh, that, that's well. cool. Yes. In Phoenix, it was like 70 percent coverage, but it was like at its height when I went when I went outside at like its height. I it was it was sunny day. It, it didn't. Yeah. I didn't have glasses. So I didn't look at the actual eclipse because seventy percent. I was like, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'm sure I'll see better videos. But in terms of looking outside, like it didn't look even like shady, even like a mini cloud. Like I was like, this is just, this is just a sunny day in Arizona. Like it was just so far <laughs> out of the path that like it just didn't do anything here. But yeah, I got to interview David Desmond, and that was awesome. Very fun time. He's a very cool guy. Um, thought it went pretty well. That's up on my YouTube. He um, came across really well. well. Like he was actually interested, which is always nice. Yeah, yeah he's he's a really. I think sweet he had guy. a good AI answer too. I, I like he it. did. I like yeah, it. yeah, he did. You don't. You had the balls to ask. I like it, Tyler. Good. Work. I don't know if I would have asked. You know, yeah, I feel like I'd have a fun. Day I don't think I would have asked as well as you did. I would have no, been like, so yeah. David, what's up with AI? You taking jobs, <laughs> man? You enjoy taking jobs? Well, it's I tough. Was... I had like seven more questions prepped than I actually asked because I got no. you got like ten minutes and then like. 30 yeah. seconds on either end was like set up and tear down but like it's tough too because this is the second interview i did it was over like a year since a year ago since i did the last one for how to blow up a pipeline but oh uh, yeah there's yeah. like multiple producers like on the call not like movie producers but like his team and stuff that are like uh like hidden and on mute or whatever just like kind of watching like, but the entire time, time right and like the entire time they're like chatting on the side in the chat box being like 
Seven minutes left, six minutes left, yeah, five yeah, minutes yeah. left. Last questions. It's like, like, it's like a shot clock countdown. Exactly. Like, I hate like, that. It made me so nervous. It's, yeah, and it's really hard to stay present in the interview too because like it yeah, makes yeah, me yeah. think like basically right when I ask a question, like right when he starts talking, I'm immediately like, okay, what's the next question going to be? How much time do I have left? Like rather mm-hmm. than like enjoying the moment. Um, so yeah, definitely learned a lot like from the interview like that I want to take back because like obviously the way I edited it, I think came across well because like I would just like full screen and pretty much every time he was talking, but like yeah. Yeah. my body language i feel like i could have been like smiling more and like giving more like you know non-verbal feedback more but like i could just tell like watching my footage back because like i could tell my mind was just racing the whole time like trying to figure out what i to couldn't do. i think you did really well especially for a second one ever i think you did better than most yeah. of us could 100%. yeah yeah it, yeah i think uh low-key like trivia 10 kind of helps like and it's asking questions is different than like interview questions on trivia yeah, 10 yeah, but yeah. it's still like you should have just made it a trivia 10 episode <laughs> dude i know i was gonna, just, I was gonna make david ride him. the bus yeah, yeah the dark knight versus the dark knight rises <laughs> what is higher like, yeah no that would have been hilarious crazy. yeah no that, that was an awesome opportunity and then other than that this week um been pretty standard altogether not too much riley's going back home to texas for a couple days her brother had a kid uh recently so gonna go see nice. see uh the baby but uh so yeah later today i'll be driving her to the airport but other than that so i don't know i'll pr- probably be similar to cam on work travel this week where i'll just be like having more time to make tiktoks and do other type of stuff like that so we'll see but um yeah nothing too crazy this week other than like the interview with david which was awesome but um yeah the eclipse was was Big eclipse fooled me. It was a waste of time. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. I, it was very cool with people in the path to- totality. So if any of you listening were in that path, that's awesome, man. Yeah, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, as far as me, not really much this week. Standard kind of work week. Um, big night tonight, been- though. Big night tonight. You're absolutely right, Tyler. Um, yeah, I was just being tired about this before we started recording. Uh, as any UFC fan will know, obviously we record this on Saturday. UFC 300 tonight, which which I was saying to Tyler is like, you know, for an MMA fan, it's not, you know, you can't compare it with like, a you know, the Super Bowl or like the NBA Finals or even like the World Cup, which obviously every four years, because the last 100 event was in 2016, which was UFC 200, obviously. And tonight I would consider it to be like the biggest card in terms of names ever in UFC history. And I think most people would agree. So I'm very, very, very excited for that. Um, like to the point where I've been like dreaming about it all week. I couldn't even sleep last night. You know, like when you're younger and you can't really sleep for Christmas because you're just so excited. I was kind of me last night. I woke up. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, (laughs) what is like the Um, fight, like the number one fight for you personally that you're like super. Well, that that's the thing. There isn't one. I think it's all across the board. It's, it's okay. Like opening up the card. There are two ex champions, which is just, with name value as well, which is like absurd. Uh, I'd probably say like the main fights I'm looking forward to probably uh, Armand Sarukian versus Charles Oliveira, um, Holloway versus Gaethje, obviously, and then probably Hill versus Pereira. But honestly, every single car, every single fight is, is amazing. So very, very, very excited for that. Um, and that's that's kind of it this week. Not really done too much um, other than that. So I think we'll kind of move on to to what we've been watching. Cam, I'm assuming you've watched like nothing this week, Un- well, other than Civil War. Cam is frozen in a, in a really <laughs> funny position. Yeah, he froze in a... Tyler! <laughs> well, yeah. I'll go first. Um, Yeah, so basically right after we recorded the last Real Talk, I went and saw Monkey Man. So uh, didn't get to review it on the pod last week. But yeah, yeah, I didn't like it as much as I was expecting to. And I think part of that just is the unfortunate uh, fallout of like me seeing it after most people already had and i feel like it got pretty much consensus like very high marks so i could think maybe my expectations were very high which i remember you even you said like on the episode like it is very much a still a debut like there's a lot of like you know things you can poke at that say and and see that it you know took a long time that the odyssey of this getting to be a movie that was released was a long journey um but yeah i don't know i i still liked it i had a positive time with it i gave it a three star um but yeah, I don't know. I thought stylistically it was, it was pretty cool. I didn't love how it was shot. Like, I didn't really love any of the fight scene. Like, the fight choreography, that was cool. And there's some cool ideas. Like, the knife in the mouth was pretty cool. But, like, the, yeah, stylistically, like, the way they shot the film, I, I, I didn't love. A lot of shaky cam, a lot of really close, narrow focus, close ups of the fights. And then uh, the middle section, I thought was v- the most interesting in terms of the culture it dove into. But, mm-hmm. 
I don't know. I, I just, it was just kind of weird the way it weaved all together. I feel like there's a lot of like momentum that was like high octane that kind of like screeched to a halt. Like I just felt like I could never get in a groove with this movie. But again, I still liked it more than I didn't. And I think it'll be a fun one to rewatch for sure. Um, then I watch, I, I kind of finished my Tarantino watches or rewatches in order to make my ranking again. Watch Kill Bill Volume 2 again. I, I did definitely like it more, but it's still three and a half for me. It's still definitely like the i think i put it in last place my tarantino ranking but i love tarantino so much like so like last place doesn't mean a whole lot um but like rewatch reservoir dogs absolutely love it just awesome debut um watch late night with the devil obviously to prepare for the the interview um i really liked it like obviously we've had the i mean we probably talked for 25 minutes about the the ai in it uh, yeah two episodes ago so i won't really like dive back into that but obviously very unfortunate that it exists and i wish it didn't um but watching it like i wonder if the guy who noticed like saw like had a screener or something because like i texted you guys i was like it's it's not exaggerating probably like 1.5 seconds and it like and it's not just like on the screen for 1.5 seconds like fades in and out so like the amount of time it's like actually front and center on the screen is like 0.7 seconds so i was like how the hell like his mind like rapid fire like analyze that thing so quick because it's, it's so fast in the movie it, it premiered in festivals in like october right no so i guess it makes sense because thousands of people saw the movie before anyone noticed so like it's anyway, crazy yeah, yeah yeah yeah. but so it kind of makes sense why it took so long for someone to notice but the movie itself i i had a blast with i think it, it's it's really fun it comes out on shutter this upcoming weekend so i'm sure a lot more people will be watching it and yeah i want to watch it um yeah if you're boycotting buying a ticket due to ai like once it's on a streaming service like at that point you know you can kind of do whatever um mm -hmm. but yeah yeah I had, I had a blast with it really fun uh david s Malchin's like kind of first leading role and i thought he did incredible i'd like to see him get more more work in that that sense uh watch dread to kind of prepare for some some more alex garland talk uh watch annie hall which was one uh one of the discord recommendations in, in our film raffle so again another reason to check out our patreon to join our discord and join these fun perks like our film raffle but uh it's a woody allen movie it's not my first woody allen movie but um, my first like early career woody allen movie and i had a good time with it like it some some parts of it were annoying because his character is just kind of uh, a little bit of an insufferable at times but uh, a lot of the dialogue's awesome it's really fun fun ro romantic comedy it, it's, it's honestly very similar to marriage story like a lot of similar vibes of marriage story uh and then watch uh seth i watched kubrick's the killing which i enjoyed nice. i enjoyed yeah. for like the first two thirds of it i was like yeah this is good but it wasn't like blowing me away but then that final third like i loved the final third like yeah, yeah awesome. really good. especially yeah, the yeah. very end was amazing so that kind of bumped it up to where it landed at a four star because i remember watching it for the most of it. i'm like i'm enjoying this but like it's probably gonna you know be like a three three and a half but yeah that final mm -hmm. act was just awesome so that, that yeah great yeah. movie um dog star man shout out owen giving me that recommendation he gave me like five movies as a recommendation like I don't know, in like January, and I'm slowly getting around to them. But watch, uh, um, watch uh, the act of seeing with one's own eyes. Stan Brackage. I want is that another Brackage. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah. Have a watch of that. Have a watch of that. See if it's is, is that one of his shorts. No, no, no. It's like well, yeah, actually, yeah. Thirty-two minutes. It's not like a short, okay. short. Uh, it is a short, yeah. Gotcha. It's, uh, see, how, see how much, yeah, stomach turn in that one. It's uh, it's really good though. But it's interesting. Very yeah. fucking interesting. Very interesting. interesting. Yeah, I mean, what a fascinating filmmaker. I mean, I'm I'm very slowly diving into his his work and, and Dog Star Man it is a collective like feature film, but it's like six sections of kind of shorts that are compiled together. But I enjoyed I mean, it more than I expected to. So I, I'll did be excited. You put music on with it. No, I didn't. I watched it the way Brockage intended for the first one. But if I ever rewatch it, I'm gonna listen to music because that's that's one of those things. It's like a silent film, um, but it's not like a silent film into what like if you've never seen a Brockage, it's not what you'd be thinking of when you say silent film, where you like think like you know like the kind of Chaplin twenties, thirties type silent film where like there's still like music, but just no talking. Like no, there's just straight up like no volume it's, in this movie. Awesome. Um, yeah. But so yeah, a lot of people listen to kind of like some scores or music in the background i, I didn't but if i rewatch it I, I probably will and maybe next time i watch like a, a longer brockage that if it doesn't have any sound I'll, I'll give it a try with music um but then annihilation civil war we'll talk about those then uh, psycho which will be our real patreon review this friday so uh alfred hitchcock psycho revisited that for the first time in over a year so that, that was fun but um yeah so make sure you're a patron because you can recommend us movies but also you'll get to see our exclusive episodes and this week it'll be psycho 
Perfect. Cam, I'm assuming you haven't watched anything other than Civil War. Maybe? Um, I watched... So I caught up on X-Men 97, which is fucking incredible. Um, just like, just a fantastic show. Um, episode five was awesome. Uh, that's so yeah. Episode five is, is the most recent one. Um, caught up on that. That's a, just a great show that I don't think either of you would check out. So I'm not going to recommend it, but hey, I I'm not you're, sure. you know. You're not going to, and that's fine. It's a, it's an animated X Men show. I don't. I, you're not going to. Um, but I think if there are any people who are like kind of on the edge with Marvel, still like it. But like this is this is very good Marvel. I think we still have um, good Marvel um, here and there. This is like very good Marvel. Um, and, and Episode Five is is some incredible Marvel. I think. Um, so so that's a plus. I watched that um, like in the airport. <coughs> Cause they're only like 30 minute episodes, which is nice. And then also uh, finished invincible um, last week, but I'm going to guess George did not touch on it last week because he fin- he finished. Um, I don't even know if he like watched the most recent. I don't think he, uh, he finished. Uh, he finished that this week. Um, so I, I want to touch on invincible, just like very, very good season again. Um, not, not nearly as good as, as season one, unfortunately. Uh, but I, I feel like that was, kind of obvious that it was going to be uh, not as good just in in my opinion i think season one is one of the best seasons of uh uh television that i I've, I've seen um and i don't i don't watch a ton of television but um very very good season uh just super weird the the cut in the middle i feel like it killed all all wave of excitement like so so seth i, I know you didn't watch but um there was i'm sure you there's four episodes like March or sorry, there were four episodes in like November, early December, and then took a two, three month skip and then picked yeah, back up in March. Just absurd, just an absurd choice. And then, so there's a very meta joke in the, in the um, invincible comics, which I bought the invincible comics. So I'm like nine, I'm like 80% through the copendium, copendium, I think it's pronounced um, copendium one, um, which is just like a massive, just the massive like book one. So I'm like through season two basically in the book. So now I'm going to start like reading the new stuff, which is cool. Um, But there's a very meta joke in the book about like how comics will sometimes reuse and reuse like graphics and stuff and just copy and paste into a different slide in order to save time. Funny joke. They use it in the movie or they use it in the show, I should say, where it's like, hey, animation's hard. Sometimes we don't show a mouth um, in order to save time and money. We just show you a picture of people standing yeah, yeah. still from a distance. Like, very meta joke, funny. I think they were trying to use it a little bit to like be like, hey, this is why we had a break. It's hard. Animation is hard. I get that. I think you just you just delay the whole season. Don't don't delay four episodes. It like I think it killed the. Uh, that's what you did, the, in the, not you. Yeah, you. yeah, like like, uh, like it's what Prime Video did. Yeah, um, like killed it hype, and I feel like this thing does not have the cultural impact as season one. And obviously, season one like has the crazy reveal of of um, Mark Stad being the villain, and then it has like a very very great final episode. But I think the final episode of this was just was just awesome, um, and it feels like it does not have as much of an impact at all. I'd be interested to see like the viewing numbers of one, season one versus season two, part one, and then season two, part two. I feel like it has to be on the decline. Um, and then also, like I mentioned, like the copendiums, there are three, um, and I hope I'm saying that right. I have no clue. There are three. There are massive books where like 80% the show is two seasons in, like 80% the way, maybe like 70% the way through season or sorry through book one so you gotta assume if we're doing that math 140 210 we get us two more season or no that'd be four more seasons so say like six more seasons left in order to get through the books i just i don't see a tv show nowadays running for nine eight eight seasons or whatever my math was there nine seasons like i just don't see that happening Yeah, Yeah, there are not many shows that run for nine seasons now. So I'd be interested to see, like, when does the show stop? Like, actors are just not going to want to be. I mean, it's probably not that hard to do. Then again, definitely easier to walk into a studio and read. It's animated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 easier to walk into. It's usually more, like like you said, because they can just walk into the studio, which is still hard in itself, obviously. 
but yeah, there's no, more it's... longevity to animated shows than there is to, to to live action most of the time anyway i would say yeah i thought yeah. the simpsons is on like season 78 or some shit now which is yeah well that, that and that like is fair that the simpsons i have no idea how it's still running but people people watch it so congrats have you it, seen I, any I of the latest like, simpsons episodes come no nah, i don't think i've seen it. i've watched the simpsons movie but i don't know if i've ever watched simpsons tv ever no, have you seen you've really. seen rick and morty haven't you I, I barely, I've I seen so some Family Guy. I'm me. not into like the adult animation shows as much. Like I've seen some fam- Family like Guy's funny here and there. I feel like you love Rick and Morty. I feel like uh, that's your yeah. kind of like comedy, you know? That's nah, crazy. It probably yeah. is. I just, I, I'm too late at this point. And also the like main guy was like a pedophile or something. So I, 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 well, I, I feel like that. I feel like that thing fell off a cliff after, think, after that all came out. I think you got um, done with uh, Domestic charges against his wife. I think that was it. Oh, was that what it is? Okay. Uh, yeah, instead of just way, leaving, just calling that. <laughs> they're just not saying anything. I think. I think that was it. But yeah, no, yeah. I know you made it a bit late to it now, but yeah, no, um, yeah. I just don't see. I don't see how uh, how Invincible runs for say like nine seasons. I I want it to because I'm sure I've I've heard nothing but good things in the books, and I think there's nothing but good things in the show. Uh, but I just I I feel like it's gonna end up they're gonna finish it on like season four or something. And not finish the whole story, which is just kind of odd. But who knows? We'll we'll see what Prime Video. I don't know what the kind of numbers they do is are. Like I know season one was a massive hit, um, and a way bigger hit than they probably expected. But I don't know if season two was a big letdown or maybe it was a great great second season. Who I I don't know. So we'll see. Fair but th- that's that's kind of where I'm at. And uh, yeah, reading the books, enjoying it. But that's about it. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, this week I watched. Um... Watched Argento called The Cat of Nine Nails was very good. Watched U- Ugetsu, which is a Japanese film. Um, pretty good. Watched Femme. I don't know if you guys have, have seen it advertised. It's the new kind of, it stars uh, George McKay and can't remember his name. It's uh, Netflix on Netflix, Nathan Stewart Jarrett. It, it ran the festival circuit. Um, didn't like it at all. It's quite a controversial film, actually. Watched Shaun of the Dead because uh, shout out 20th anniversary, Shaun of the Dead. Coming back to. Um, Getting a, a Dolby restoration coming back to cinemas Ooh. later this year, which is fucking cool. Um, Civil War, watch that obviously, which we'll, we'll speak about next. A Little Princess, because I wanted to take off more of Alfonso Cuaron's films. That's fine. Uh, I went to see Rat Catcher last night, which is obviously Lynn Ramsey, who directed um, You Were Never, you never really, really Here. And uh, we need to talk about Kevin with Thomas Winton and Ezra Miller. Uh, Rat Catcher, really, really great. Um, it's like a 25th anniversary, I think. Like last week, uh, so they restored it in 4K, uh, packed, packed cinema. I love my my like local cinema that I always go to now. I make it like a point. I go every Friday without fail like, on my own, get some food after. Solo dates are like the nicest thing, you know. what I mean, they just are like I fucking mm-hmm. love going on my own. It's great. Um, and they do like oftentimes at the cinema they'll do like um instead of showing ads, they'll basically have like a, maybe like a lecture from local university. Last night they had a friend. Um, a, a, a documentary filmmaker, a friend of Lim Ramsey's, speak about the film and speak about Lim Ramsey's career instead of showing ads. Yeah, that's cool. Really, really interesting. You know what I mean? It, and it shows that they care as well. Actually, the passion behind the film. So that was great. I watched one of the shorts when I got back as well because I was really intrigued about that. And then I watched Sunshine, which was kind of the uh, one of, the, I think, I haven't seen Dread, which we'll go into. I haven't got a chance to see that, but mm-hmm. Sunshine was the other major uh, Garland right, writing credit I hadn't seen. Mm-hmm. Um, into that but i think that kind of brings us in nicely to the main review of the week which is obviously alex garland's civil war uh let me just get the the synopsis up now um right so i was going civil war which i think is the is it the highest budget a24 pro- film ever it is yes yeah, it's the highest and i believe it is on track to be the first time a tw- an a24 film has led the box office on an opening weekend interesting yeah. uh, so it's in the near the future best opening weekend they've had you know that. yeah in the near future, a group of war journalists attempt to survive while reporting the truth as the United States stands on the brink of civil war. Um, written directed by Alice Garland, starring Kirsten Dunst, Wagner Mora, Katie Spain, Nick Offerman, Stephen McKinley, Jefferson White, and, and a few other good people in there. Um, so obviously this has been quite a polarizing release, um, getting a just crazy polarizing release. I think we'll start with Tyler, if you want to give you your review first. <clears throat> Yeah, so I'm going to put this out there. I'm thinking, so I have the Wikipedia open of like the plot. I'm thinking maybe do we want, want to just kind of go in order of the plot and talk about it as we go through the movie? Because I feel like there's a lot I want to dive into with this. And yeah. Like, you know, my I'm overall good. review would be a little scattered. Um, but but I guess we'll we'll save that for when we get into spoilers. So I guess we'll start with high level. Yeah, first. just give like 
quick spoiler free yeah. kind of thoughts on the film. I mean, this isn't a spoiler, but you said like, you know, in the synopsis it says like on the brink of civil war, like there's no brink. It's civil wars happening in this movie. Um, yeah. It's like kind of a weird synopsis because it's very much ongoing in this movie. But um, yeah, so well, like I said, I want to get pretty in depth into this movie. So we're going to do a lot of it in the spoiler talks. So I'll keep it very high level here. So I did not enjoy civil war really whatsoever. Um, the politics I think will be easier to discuss or lack thereof, but there's still politics in the movie will we'll be easier to discuss when we get into spoilers. So I did not like care for how Alex Garland's viewpoint of how he wanted to tackle civil war in terms of not really taking m- much of a political stance. And I know that that's very intentional. It's obviously been the most disgusting thing about the film is its decision to it doesn't mean you have not- to like it though. Because people are acting like because it's intentional, it means it's fine. Right. You know? And yeah, and I feel like that, that's like the most like surface level like anti criticism where when people are like, I don't like the decision that this was apolitical, and then people are like, Oh, well, that was like by design, gotcha. And it's like, um, yeah, I don't like still. it. Um, so. but like I said, the politics of it and talking about the meat of the movie will get more in spoilers, but completely removing the politics of the film altogether. I just didn't like it period. Like I thought this was like, this is a road trip movie. Like 90% of this Mm -hmm. movie is just a road trip that I was just genuinely bored with. So again, completely removing any of the political stances, any of the, the controversial elements, of this movie, I was just kind of like, this is not very interesting. I thought the character, the cast was great, but like, I didn't care about any of them. I feel like this movie is supposed to celebrate journalists, but my takeaway is I feel like Alex Garland kind of hates journalists as a result of this movie. Like he kind of just, made them look pretty stupid and inept and it's just interesting that he's a novelist who was a screenwriter who's now a director because this is such like a writer's viewpoint of imagery to me because i feel like he is basically kind of showing this movie like all these images mean nothing without the writing behind it like and i feel like it's just him being like this is why we need writers man because look you can have all these cool (laughs) images and impactful images but without my writing and without people taking this a step further nothing's going to change and nothing will be accomplished. There's going to be no ground furthered. So I don't know, like to me, we'll get into more bulk of it for my thoughts, but I gave it one and a half star. And when we get in the spoilers, we'll talk more of my thoughts, but completely removing the politics of the movie aside, I just still didn't enjoy it. Cause I was like, this is kind of just a, a bland road trip with some pretty stupid characters making very dumb decisions for most of it. And yeah, I don't know. Like it's the highest budget a 24 film, but like, I feel like they just packed all that budget in the final 10 minutes when like action starts happening. Yeah. So, like I feel like they didn't really need, like, I mean, I feel like it's clear why they gave us such a big budget. They know it's going to be polarizing. I know it's going to be provocative. They know it's an election year in America. So people are going to go see it. This is going to get, this is going to be a lot of people's first introduction to a 24 in terms of like, I don't know. My theater was a lot of like older crowds in terms of like, no, I don't know what you mean. I don't and probably more re- republican type crowds going to see this because they're like oh there's a provocative interesting concept i want to go see what this is about so i can see why they gave it the big budget they're going to probably make money on it but yeah didn't care for it didn't like it kind of hated the entire thing there's a moment like so there's a lot of gra- like pretty graphic imagery and like 20 minutes in riley went to go to the bathroom which is pretty common like she has to you know like you know what goes to the bathroom during a movie so she did and i texted her i was like you doing all right like low-key hoping like there was actually a part of me with during this movie where I like hope was kind of hoping she was going to be like, no, nah, I don't really like this. Like, can we leave? Cause I was like, I don't want to be not cause and not even cause of graphic imagery, just cause I was not enjoying it so much. I was like, if she wanted to leave, I would have been like, Oh, cool. Let, like, let's go. I, did, I, did I, she I hate it as well. No, she gave it a three and a half. Like she's like, it was, oh, she, she, she was like, it's just a fine. She basically said it's like, whatever. She didn't like it, dislike it, but there was enough positive about it that she gave it a positive rating. But yeah, I don't know. I didn't care for it. I didn't really want to be in that theater. I didn't. There's also a really fucking annoying guy in like the front row of my theater. Oh. Like him and his like wife or something were talking the whole time. And um, I, I mentioned this in our text. Like this isn't spoiling anything, but like they're journalists, so like they'll take pictures during the movie. And like when they take a picture, like all the sound design will cut out, which I thought the sound design was awesome. The sound design was really great. But every time they take a picture, like all the loud noises will just kind of go silent for a second while they kind of snapshot that picture. So like they'll be talking loudly throughout the entire thing, which during some action you don't really hear too much and bother me but then like someone will take a picture and then all the noise goes silent and then you just hear them just talking so loudly in the front row and and they take a lot of pictures in the movies there's a lot of moments where i could just hear them yapping away and i wanted to ooh, i wanted to throw you hands at Peter. yeah they're like 50 roads away from me though they were so far away so just, like, just jumped down the rows you know i just was throwing your popcorn at them 
Yeah, just I, I was literally so close to like the next time they took a picture, just yell like "Shut up!" in front. <laughs> like it just they were so annoying. <laughs> but um, yeah, I didn't have a good time with Civil War whatsoever. But uh, we'll we'll talk a lot more about it. But I'm really excited to hear what Cam, especially. Obviously, I'm excited to hear your thoughts. Yeah, we don't know. Cam, well, Cam hasn't posted his yeah. letterbox review at the time. Before. I just we did. Don't know. I just did, and it oh, just well, says, well, "I'm not going to watch this." Wanna, no, 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 no. Yeah. Tell us about go, no, go, go. Yeah, it just says watch and listen to the real talk podcast. That's all it says. Okay, uh, I'm copping out. I gave this. But I thought you. Oh, fuck. What's up? I was gonna. I was gonna because I, I was gonna guess. I was being to honor you before. Guess. Did I? Did I, I, no, I say? I've just heard you say two, so I'm assuming uh, two okay. point something or two maybe. Yeah. 2. So I get I, uh, 50, 50 out of a hundred, two and a half wow. out of five, right down the middle. I cop it, copping out on this one, um, because I liked I, I i don't know there are part for every moment i liked there's a moment i didn't like um like Ty, tyler said do we do we know why this world is in civil war nope okay okay thank you i was so fucking confused i'm like what is the civil war over but that's that's what tyler said like they just it's completely apolitical they take it out com- entirely and it's like the the president's running for his third term or he's in his third term i think and that's like the big biggest controversy um but they don't like take us there's there doesn't need to be a stance per se like you could take a stance on both sides of like hey this is wrong and this is wrong uh, but there's nothing there's there's no stance like there's no even thing to stand on like i don't know why this world's in a civil war and, and that really like irked me during the thing of like and you can make assumptions like based on america now like that, but also why the fuck are texas and california together you don't get any of this like we don't we don't get any of this information i feel like or maybe i just missed it um but well, no, it, shout out doug doug tweeted like at the beginning when he was going to see it well also crazy fit pick we all talked about that in our group chat crazy fit right. doug but um yeah because he was like time to go see what this civil war was all about and then he like quote tweets it after the movie he's like i have no idea what that civil war was about <laughs> exactly like you don't know anything about it or you don't get any motives for anyone it's like everyone hates the Civil War, but no one hates the Civil War. Like, I don't, I don't know. Um, sh- shout out the devious fit, Doug. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just a movie about nothing, it felt like to me. Um, and I think I think it looked really good. Like, I think visually it looked really good. I know, Tyler, you didn't like it being in IMAX. I don't know what else would be in IMAX other than just keep Dune running forever in IMAX. Which they kind of did because they're bringing it yeah. back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Just, yeah. just let Dune run all of 2024 in IMAX. There's no movie Until that's Furiosa, compare yeah. to that yet. Uh, yeah, sure. Until Furiosa. Um, shout out this movie. It's in my top five of the year. <laughs> um, <laughs> at, at a 50 out of 100, I have one five out of five. And then I think the next highest is a three out of five. Yeah. <laughs> um, in letterbox terms, I I liked Kaylee Spaney a ton. I'm hopping on that train. Uh, yeah, she was awesome in this. Um, but like you said, just makes a ton of dumb decisions in this. Uh, Jesse Plemons has never done wrong in his life. Um, just the best in, in the 10 seconds he's in in this movie. Um, we'll get into that. Uh, but those, my general thoughts are like for everything I liked, I, I didn't like something else. Tyler, I understand. I like the sound designs in some, like the pictures, taking a picture and having the sound cut out. That's fine. The sound cut out every three minutes and for a different moment, like when a bomb explodes or something. And I get that you do that in a movie, but like it felt like the sound cut out once a once every five minutes mm-hmm. for me. And I just was like, all right, we're we're doing it too much. You have it. You're you're you have your trick, and you're and you're doing it too much. Mm-hmm. Like I've seen this one. I think um, I would have so, been more fine uh, with that if I was watching it at home, but like theater crowds just don't have the etiquette to be able to have such long silences in theaters where like no, I agree. They're, they're just they're, they're talking, yapping. Well, One person in the bu- like three rows behind us was like, "Did the speaker stop working?" I was like, "Oh my, I, please, Alex Garland, bring the sound back before I lose my yeah. mind from the other theater goers just talking during yeah. this." I was in a empty theater. I was the only one in the theater. Um, got to sit wherever, so I didn't. I didn't have that issue, um, luckily, but. But yeah, I was interested. I don't know. I was interested to see what the Civil War was about. Didn't see anything. I also think it was in we. It's not a spoiler. They 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 have like play. They have like a hotel in this, and I thought it was interesting that like because this post apop post apocalyptic world, right? But like things are still running. You have Wi Fi. You have a hotel still. Like places are still running, and I think that was like an interesting look 
because I feel like anytime you get into an apocalypse or a post apocalyptic world, I can't speak. Um, like everything's like, oh, everything's broken. It's all a war land out here. And it is, but also like, hey, there's still some businesses running here and there. Um, so I thought that was an interesting look. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about some other things um, as we get into it. But but Seth, you can give your thoughts. Yeah, kind of similar thoughts to both of you. Um, my uh, my cinema is actually, my experience was actually quite good because I was at like a, a packed screening, but it was like an early showing. Not an invite one, but just when we get you know, tickets for a few days early. So most people will go and rush really interested, which is cool. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting one. So the first kind of, again, we'll go into kind of what actually happens, but you know, what happens right at the start when you're kind of thrown into it. I quite liked. I thought it was, you know, open it opened itself up as like this kind of sensory overload. Um, and I thought, okay, this is actually gonna have a lot to say. Um, and then throughout I'm kind of waiting for it to have anything to say. And I, you know, there's been a whole criticism about it being apolitical, and obviously a critique about people saying it's apolitical and whatever. I, I don't think that um politics and taking a stance is, is necessary in 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 film, in, in majority of film, of course I don't. And it's not even saying, you know, taking a stance is necessary in this, but I think you need to take a swing of some sort if you're going to make a film like this, because otherwise, what's the fucking point as far as I'm concerned? I do think that some of the commentary on kind of um, post-war sort of a war-torn journalism is, is actually quite good. Um, I do I do see, you know, some of the examples. I've, I've read a few reviews about that, and I do actually agree a lot of the time. I think it was showcased quite well by Kaylee Spaney, who is, like, starting out, and and, and the, the effects of it, obviously, on Kirsten Dunst. Both of them, who I thought were, were brilliant, are kind of the psychological impacts, which, we which you know, if it delves into further throughout the film on, on Kirsten Dunst's character. I think that what Alex Garland is really good at um, is getting the most out of his actors, if I'm going to say one thing about this film. You know, I think he does it in, like, every film, where the central performances are always great, which is, you know, always a good thing. Um, but I just, it's just full of like boring notes that offer no new insight into anything. I think I called it like in my review, like a political push and pull when, when the, you know, it, it, there's, there's nothing there um, in terms of what he's saying. I think some of the sequences are cool. You know, there's some loud, big moments like at the end, which we'll go into and in the start as well. And obviously throughout like in the scene, like Cam mentioned with Jesse Plemons, who, who is great as always. Um, but a lot of it felt emotionally hollow and there's these kind of big, emotional moments quote unquote and it's like i didn't really feel much you know if anything for the characters um saying that i didn't i didn't hate at all i think there were there were some moments that i found quite captivating and there were some moments where i think there is more to it than maybe gauged from first watch particularly within the journal and size of things but then it's also hard to tell whether it's a critique of journalism as well and whether it's gone actually Gets that across in, a, in an efficient way, uh, like Tyler was saying. I don't know. Obviously, we can go into it more when we speak about the, the spoilers, which we can do now. To be fair, I give it a two and a half, so so same as Cam. So, uh, George, well, I, uh, I'll, sure, know, I'll, I'll read George's review just so we can kind of give, yeah, give yeah. A yeah. If someone yeah. hasn't seen it. Uh, so George, give it a four. Let me just get up his review. Where is he? I will say on George's behalf, he goes to a bunch. If I went to a screening with like the cast and everyone, I'd probably say it's like a five out of five. Not not having anything in my brain. George, huh? I don't think George gets influenced like that though. No, I don't think so either. I'm just saying I would like if I'd be like, ah, oh, shit. I think I liked it. Like everyone there liked it. I'm in. <laughs> like, I don't know. Cam, I, I don't. I don't know. I think you know. You you always think that, and then you'll go and see some of this really shit, and you'll be like, that's oh, really shit. shit. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's fair. I'm sure it's fair. Uh, so George, let me just go to his review. So go to four stars, read his review. Two-hour anxiety-inducing trip, a journey through America, seen through the eyes of photojournalists, capturing the relentless civil war. Alice Garland manages to immerse you in this panic-driven setting with stunning shots, torturous sequences, and high production value while begging you to question the possibilities of the civil war. And I think, like, I think me and Tyler were speaking before, this isn't something where George is, like, going to defend his life over. You know, there are certain people out there um, who are saying, like, do people even watch the right movie when you know what I mean it's like everyone has different interpretations of great about film, but there are idiots um online and George is not one of those idiots, but he definitely likes it more than the rest of us. But yeah, I think we'll go into kind of spoilers, kind of the, the flow of go on, come. I real quick, I 110% this morning I was driving back from Emma's grandparents' house 
110% meant to do my spoiler free review like this was Captain America Civil War. Damn it, damn it, damn it. I I, I had that joke planned. Like on TikTok like, or in this podcast? Uh, in like, right now, like I, was, I can still do it on TikTok, but I, it, TikTok, it's, yeah, yeah, I don't know. The moment's, pa- I'm mad at myself now. Man, <laughs> damn. Messed it up. Uh, Messed it up. Tyler, does anybody want to kind of stall or do you want to just run through? Whatever. Yeah, so I'll, I'll kind of walk us through the, the synopsis on Wikipedia. And this is me trusting Wikipedia to be like, I mean, we've, have, we've, we've seen it, you know. We yeah, know. yeah, we've seen it, but I, like a good outline. So th- the movie starts, which I think it, it starts in a very interesting way that I actually like the opening where it starts yeah. with Kirsten Dunst's character kind of as this journalist uh, or photojournalist in the middle of, uh, of a protest between two sides. You see, you know, assumably like the federal government or the federal military versus kind of like these protesters. And then all of a sudden you see someone with the flag scream out something like America or something and, and run into the middle of both, you know, both sides of this conflict with, with the bomb strapped to them and exploding. Um, so it's just a chaotic opening that mm-hmm. felt very Alex Garland, who has not never strayed straight away from having kind of shock value in his films. So I thought the int- opening was awesome with, and it set me up for being like, okay, this this is going to be a ride of a movie. With same, you know, same them. Just starts off immediately with it, a massive does, bomb in the middle of a protest. It does set you up in a complete different tone to the rest of the film, which I think you alluded to, Tyler. Like it really set me up thinking this was going to be a completely different film than it was. Like this really massive sensory overload that you know expects you to to be this kind of loud and big moments, which is why I expect it. But it really is just like a, a road trip film, mm-hmm. essentially. Essentially, what it is. Yep. And, and presumably the way this kind of this film shakes out is it's like the Western forces are who's kind of trying to take over the White House, which includes, I believe, the loyalist states are like what is. like Yeah. The yeah. So it's like middle America, um, like through New York, basically. Right. Right. But then the weird thing is there's like the new people's army in the northwest and then there's the Florida alliance in the southeast. But like. I mean, this is kind of jumping forward. We're not going to get too much into it. But like when Jesse Plemons is like, oh, like what part of America are you from? And then the one guy's like, oh, I'm from Florida. He's like, oh, the Florida lines. Okay. Oh, yeah. You pulled that up. So, yeah, this is where we're kind yeah. of at. So this but the is like way the map kind of, of America. Yeah. So it makes it seem like the Florida Alliance and the loyal, like the Florida Alliance and the, the new people's army, like where do they factor into this? Like, did they join the Western forces and are fighting the loyalist states? Are they just like separate their own thing? Because the way that Jesse Plemons scene almost kind of played out is he's like, Oh, you're from Florida, the Florida Alliance. Okay, we're cool with them. But he didn't really make it sound like they're like part of the Western forces fighting on the Capitol. So is it like, are they just breaking off and being their own thing? Very confusing. And that's kind of why being apolitical is just kind of weird in this because it's it, or just not, refusing to explain stuff. But going back to chronologically. So after this initial bombing that happens during this protest, this is where Kirsten Dunst meets Kaylee Spaney's character. We kind of realize Kirsten Dunst is like the goat in terms of, film war, war journalism taking like she, pictures yeah like, yeah she's during, been she's during been the published war. for years it, sound, it seems like she's kind of had decades of a career of being like you know a top see i believe reuters might be the company she technically works for so like yeah. very top journalist and then kaylee spaney is this brand new bright-eyed and bushy-tailed wannabe journalist Rain. doesn't show yeah. up with any protection to the the bombing um no special high viz vests or anything and and that's kind of where they first meet and kirsten dunn's kind of looks out for and says like hey like next time you come to one of these you need to be prepped you need to have you know protective gear on um so that's kind of the whole opening scene with with that bombing that really sets you up for like this is going to be a very incendiary movie which is when it just kind of takes a complete 180 for a long term of the movie where after this they go back to the hotel kind of cam was referencing and they meet there and kirsten dunn's and uh, Steve Wagner McKinley. Mora and Stephen McKinley Henderson. So go. Wagner, Wagner Mora and Kirsten Dunst are kind of like partners trying to get to Washington, D.C. to interview the president, ask him why he's bombing his own citizens, get that kind of money shot interview is what their goal is, which a lot of different reporters are trying to race to get. Um, meanwhile, Charlottesville, Virginia, which for people not in America, very close to Washington, D.C., um, that's kind of where like the front lines of this fight is going on. Um, and that's where most journalists are going to report on the front lines, whereas there's like kind of more risky journalists trying to get to Washington, D.C. to get an interview with the president. So they start plotting their road trip there. And that's where Kaylee Spaney shows up once again and kind of says, like, hey, like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do this thing, be a, a journalist, trying to get into it. Um, Kirsten yeah. Dunst doesn't really want much to do with her. But then we kind of realize by the time the next morning comes that after Kirsten Dunst goes back to her hotel room, uh, that she spoke with Wagner Mora and Stephen McKinley Henderson and kind of got all buddy buddy, um, drank with them all night to kind of 
infiltrate their group of trying to get to Washington, D.C. And Stephen McKinley Henderson's a rival reporter at a different site. He's at but, New York Times, I believe. New York Times, but he's kind of According buddies with him. Wagner Mora. And he's also like kind of like a goat in the industry. Like he has a long career, very well respected. So they decide, okay, it was just going to be Kirsten Dunst and Wagner Mora going on this trip. Um, they decide to bring both Stephen McKinley Henderson and Kaylee Spaney for four of them going on this road trip, which really interesting. Also, which I wish they like laid out like so like just own because the, they're in are they in Boston Cam when they start? Uh, where are mm. New, no they're in New York City New York City okay so they're in New York City oh, trying to get to Washington yeah. DC which let you know let's yeah I, I for my own sake US map I just want to pull up pull it's up not that. too far is it it's not too far no I want to pull up this US map just to show um I don't know the best one okay, do you want so, me to just share that same map that I had um let me see I think I have this going yeah. here Okay, so we have the U.S. map here. So they're in New York City right here, and they want to get to Washington, D.C. So they want to get from here to here. Four-hour drive. <laughs> yep, but they say because of the way the war is going, they have to go all the way through Pittsburgh and loop back oh, around. Okay, okay. So like, I missed that part. And Pennsylvania is a big state. So for like, that's probably like driving from the south tip of U.K. all the way to the north tip and the back. So it's like, it's just very interesting how like... No, really? Like, Throw it into throw it into Google Maps. You can do like Pittsburgh as a stopping point. Like like throw From it into the rep. Yeah. New York City. This, this is <laughs> peak, New York. Peak this podcast. Is peak, uh, podcasting right now. Yeah. New York City to Pittsburgh. Come on, I spelled it right. Press drive. Oh, you're six right. hours. Six hour drive. Six hour drive. No, it's not north to the south of UK, liar. It's like eight hours from isn't it? To the UK? No, north south of the UK. How no. how long? I, I don't know. I feel how like, long that I'd say is, like yeah. 11. 11. I'd say like okay. 11, 12, maybe. Okay. Well, fine. I, do, I don't you, know. You, you, just carry on, you just carry but on. New York to Pittsburgh, to like wildly out of the way to like loop back around into Washington. So it's a very interesting track that they have to go for the for those routes to get to where they're trying to go to, as opposed to just going directly there. But I guess the way the war's gone. They they can't get there the way they're trying to go. So that's going hours. To, fourteen hours. hours. Okay, yeah. fair. Bigger than you think. Hours. Give us some credit, you know. But but back back and forth, it, it would be you know driving yeah. all the, the round trip ends up probably being the whole length of what it would be. Yeah, when they yeah. could have just gone like three hours, or whatever. If they were going directly, mm -hmm. um, so they go on this long roundabout road trip, and then that's where this movie kind of screeches to a halt. Like they pass a gas station with these kind of militia dudes there that just look like the worst type of humans and they have to get gas and they're very like, it's like they make it an intense scene of like, are they going to give them gas or not? They're the press, but do you respect the press? And then it's a senseless scene. It means nothing. That scene it, is so it's purely shock value, like pr provocative. Like, like he walks fucking uh, Kaylee Spenny's character down they see like the people they've got hanging there, whatever people, you know, and then uh, it's, re well, it's really just like a, Hey, this is the crazy things that are happening. See. And, and then, and then, Hey, look how desensitized uh, Kirsten Dunst's character is taking a photo immediately. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. Wow. That was such a great insight there, Alex. I mean, mm -hmm. there's nothing. Here's what I'll say. This is the start of a lot of scenes, maybe not a ton, but I feel like I noticed it, which isn't good. A lot of scenes that like, seem intense and then just kind of end abruptly uh yeah I, like you know, i agree i don't because like the car chase scene seems intense and then just kind of ends abruptly and i thought for a little bit the jesse plevin scene was going to it doesn't but i thought it was it was pretty damn close i didn't find much of this film intense or as intense as people often find yeah. it it's a, it's an interesting one uh, well apart from the, honestly the opening scene was kind of mm -hmm. heart racing the most but I just find these scenes, kind of these stop buys on the road trip, and we'll, we'll go into the Jess plans as well, mm -hmm. just purely for like, look how desensitized violence is, you know, look how commonplace it is. Um, look at these journalists, you know, not really caring, this, whatever. And it's just, it's really obvious. It's really on the nose. Mm -hmm. It's senseless. It's, it's shot value, as Tyler said. It's kind of just stupid in a way mm -hmm. like i don't get anything from these scenes especially this one maybe the jersey Clemens one more so because we get a little bit more background into um the areas and kind of you know whatever but mm -hmm. this one 
Well, yeah, and then the one we're gonna get to shortly too, like the the hol- like the holiday one that that area where there's like the sniper and like the house. I thought that one was incredibly like stupid. That, was, oh. that one was so. That was another one. Yeah, like, the sniper in the that house. That so one ends pretty abruptly. abruptly. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay. After the duel, okay, then they're like, okay, I knew it was more than twice. Well, I knew it was the more sniper than twice. guy. The sniper guy is like, oh. They're just what he said. They're just shooting us. We're just shooting back at them or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think it was meant to like, like no one really knows why they're fighting, kind of thing. Yeah, but, guess, but it's in my so opinion, obvious. that's stupid. <laughs> Give us a reason they're fighting. I like. I, I understand you're in war, and it's not. It's not like the, if someone's shooting at you, you're probably just going to shoot back if you're a. If you're a. I don't know uh, if like they need soldier or something, but no. That, yeah, Seth. Exactly what you're trying to get at is exactly what, that's when I like it fully cemented to me that Alex Garland. It's such a writer that doesn't respect images because that's such an easy thing you could show visually of like such a, two oh, Americans by the way. Are killing each other. But he's like spells it out for you and spits it out for you and be like, like he just does not respect the visual medium. I don't think. He, I, I I think that's so genuinely like just such a director who's not confident in his own imagery, like you said. Like it's literally he just says it. And mm-hmm. I I remember distinctly hearing that line and just be like, oh my god, that is. Mm-hmm. Fucking that is just, awful. Just awful. Felt that bad. scene was so bad. Like really, that really was, that bad. was one of the worst scenes in the film for sure. But yeah, one yeah. thing that someone wrote, and going back to the the gas station thing, which weaves into some other parts of the movie, someone wrote this in their critique. But I felt the same way when I was watching it. I, I've read so much critical analysis, critics reviews in depth. Yeah, like, on this movie it because it, it's one that like, and I didn't want to review this on TikTok because I think it is just an impossible film to talk about positively or negatively in a short form content. So. It, I've read so much about it, and one person that said this, which I felt the same way, is like, like they like dangle this idea of like Kaylee Spaney about to get raped so many times in this movie, like the gas station when she walks back there and the guy yeah. follows her, when she jumps into the other car with a guy we don't really know, and then, we're like, yeah, oh, yeah, what? It and like, oh, it's really Kidding odd. Me. Multiple times, like, yeah, they're trying to show she's inept and bright eyed and bushy tailed, but it, like really weird. It's a weird way times where it's like what's about to happen to her and like i, I felt very uncomfortable that they kept it's a weird that. way and again i think this comes back to i was going not be very confident it's a weird way to show like almost this childlike naivety like you don't mm-hmm. need to do it in that sort of way i find that really bizarre i didn't actually mm-hmm. think about that you know and i've just thought about it again there was a few instances like that as well so it's just mm-hmm. i think it's just amateurish to be honest mm-hmm. it's just really amateurish to show it that way and, mm-hmm. and weird as well definitely like so. yeah it's it's just odd and i think kaylee spaney being she's like 25 26 but she just looks so much younger like really adds into like how like the weirdity of it too because like and then they also mentioned like oh yeah like wagner mora was getting drunk with her at the bar and hitting on her like there's just so many weird references. yeah that was such a fucking weird line because yeah. like, that was after the conversation that they were having in the back of the the car as well you right. know, he's like, um, you know, wake me up if you need anything, like yada yada. And then mm-hmm. they just throw that line in there. It's so yeah, pointless, just you know, weird. Just, um, yeah, weird. but so they get the gas, they get that that gas station trip I thought was mindlessly stupid, where they're just like made it intense for no reason, shock value for no reason. It's just kind of meant to be Kaylee Spaney's first, like, oh shit, this is real type thing, where she sees this these people strung up as if she didn't just survive, like as if she didn't in the middle of a with loads of bodies and stuff like yeah. it's what we so, doing Point didn't really get that but then i don't know if i'm missing anything between that gas station trip and then getting to the holiday little christmas thing i think in between them was when they slept overnight and just saw the gunshot in the air and like talking about how like, like, what was the christmas yeah. thing the one with the snipers facing off I call it the Christmas thing. Was like, the next bit. No, no, it was, no, like, it was, it was like a winter wonderland. Like they were. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see what you mean. I remember that was. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that was that was straight after. Yeah, but I, I think in between them was when they had like spent the night and slept during the, the gunfire, and that's when they had that conversation we were talking about. But again, like I don't know. There's some like I thought the imagery in there was kind of cool. Like I, I kind of like the shot in the back of the car with like the smoke going up and then the fire, like the gunshots in the background. I was like, okay, yeah, there was some cool you know? moments for sure. Um, but then at this point, they go to that like kind of winter wonderland holiday thing where there's snipers facing off, which we kind of already br- touched on this. But I just hated that scene so much because yeah, I get it. The whole point is supposed to be oh yeah, it's just Americans killing Americans or like countrymen killing countrymen. Like they should be the same sides but they're just killing each other for no reason they have no idea who they are there's one shooting at me so i'm gonna shoot back at them the senselessness of war but i think it could have been really impactful if he just didn't so just, ham-handed and ham-fisted just, just spell don't, it out. uh i think that was watching i think i think that was the worst scene in the film yeah i think mm-hmm. it was. i think that was I really just 
so not even necessarily pointless, just like you said, just ruined by Alex Garland's heavy handed, spoon fed nature of his writing style. Mm -hmm. Um, really bizarre scene, yeah. I didn't mm -hmm. get that at all. Like, I, I remember, like, vividly remember just like face palming at that moment, just being like, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I looked across at um, Oscar uh, Trinic, who's, who's a patron of ours, um, and he did the same thing. We were just like, yeah, that's what we're doing. Just, and yeah, when we talked about like scenes that start and end abruptly, that's like the most abrupt like start because like once they finally kill the guy, it's like, all right, cool, we're back on the road, let's go. Like yeah. it's just like, just so I don't know. And and again, I just feel like so much of this is just shock value for shock value, provocation for for, for, for provocative sake. Because like when they drive away really fast, they like run over a dead body, and it's like cool. You just threw yeah. that in there just to be like cool. I'm gonna be honest. Little, wow, I thought that crazy. was a mannequin. I, I thought that was a mannequin from that. I just <laughs> no, now realizing that was a dead body. Oh, yeah, alrighty. dead body. But dead th body. that's not like the craziest take because they are on like this like weird like winter wonderland thing. But mm -hmm. um, so at this point, this is when they start going on the road again. This is when like the car chase scene happens where all of a sudden the car is following them. You're like, oh shit, what's going to happen? A car is going uh... faster. And then it, it just ends up being like the rival journalists who are also basically we find out that Wagner Mora, when he was drunk, hitting on Kaylee Spain, he was running his mouth too much, saying that he was planning on going to the Capitol, getting the mm. interview of the president. So then these other rival journalists are like, shit, we're going to go there too. We're going to beat you there. So then they come and then just again, just like Alex Garland just wants to show us through this movie that journalists are the stupidest people in society, just the bottom tier intelligence. Because like he just says like, oh, yeah, journalists, what a, journalists love see like because journalists love getting war films, they must be adrenaline junkies, which means they must want to just jump this from car to car through the windows. Like, yeah. basically, he's like war journalism. He's acting as if favorite scene. He's just acting like war journalism is something people do because they like are looking for a thrill and, and and excitement and adrenaline, as if it's not trying to like document crimes and and bring to light crazy things in the world. So, it, of course, when we have the one guy jump over to their car, and Kaylee Spain is like, whoa. That was awesome, man. I gotta try that. So then she's like jumps through and they like the score elevates and it's so intense. Like they're trying to build it up like this is some like death defying thing. And it reminded me of something like a video game cutscene where you'd have to press triangle at a certain <laughs> moment where they jump. That's what it reminded me of. Like really yeah, no thought at all behind it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so I weird. don't understand how maybe I missed it. Like, how did this army group that jesse plemons is a part of stop a uh, car like they just kind of pulled over it looked like to me you're, did, you are did right. i miss something like it no, just kind of looked like they pulled yeah over. no no they, no they did there, there was nothing because they oh, just they well, did pull over well no so idiots, they, yeah no so they obviously like tyler was, was alluding to then um kayla spaney jumps over to the other car he like yeah. drives away it's like oh what's yeah. happened to Case many cards, he must have kidnapped Again, or whatever. Dangling those keys of like she's getting fucked. She's so like, naive. How she killed whatever. or something? Yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we're like, okay, what the fuck? And then they drive a couple minutes, and they're like, where is she? They come across this patch of you know Greenland, whatever those fields, and then the car's just there. Yeah, turned in, open doors, open doors. No, they like were running to this. Like they were so yeah. excited to go see these people. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, yeah, <laughs> very naive. And then. They get out of the car and they see Jesse Plemons and the other guy, um, like unnamed holding other guy. unnamed other guy. I can't remember who it was. And then hold, holding uh, Katie Spaney and um, the other geezer uh, at gunpoint, which is like, oh, that's interesting. How so yeah, that I just I don't understand how they got in this situation. Mm -hmm. Did they get out of the car willingly and then just like get attacked? I don't I don't get it. But I, surely I mean, they've just been there hubris of. Right, so yeah, if doors yeah. wide open meant that like Jesse Plemons them made them pull over by pointing a gun at them. Fifteen seconds earlier, we already oh, established that this car was driving 120 miles per hour. And yeah, yeah, shot, it'll, they it'll, walked. It'll. They walked far as well. Yeah. How mm -hmm. quick were they at doing this process? You know what I mean? Because yeah. they had to stop them with a gun, stop the car, get them out of the car, and walk all the way there by the time yeah. the other car got there. Right, like yeah. the other the other car had to get like run off the road due to a military vehicle, but they stopped for like two seconds before they seconds. rolled it back yeah, into yeah. gear and kept on rolling again. So it's just crazy. And like even the car chase in general, just like there's like one minor hill they go over, like after the she she jumps over cars, and that other car was like already gone. So it's like this car teleported to like all yeah. of a sudden be a mile ahead of them. It's, 
but they get there and Jesse Plemons is there. And again, so th- this scene was good purely because of Jesse. Plemons. I like this. It was some exposition, but yeah. the one thing I hated the most, which we'll talk about towards the end of the scene, I really hated, but so we get there and Jesse Plemons character is kind of interrogating these people. We see a lot of dead bodies in the back of a dumpster that we all kind of realize are either they're a combination of probably like immigrants, people not from America and people mm-hmm. who are like anti Jesse Plemons, his crew. So like the people who are anti-America are in this, in this, their bodies are in this. And we see like a big mass grave with lie being dumped on them that they're just collecting all these bodies. This is the and only we, scene that says anything though. Like, like that has like an antagonist. That's like, this guy's just a racist fuck. This is the only scene that has like any, motive even if the motive is just pure this guy's a racist like that's this is the only scene with it the mm-hmm. whole movie and mm-hmm. uh, and jesse plemons obviously is acting is chilling and he oh, he's, he's awesome great and he's intense in this scene i think the the dichotomy of him wearing like these like dollar store looking red sunglasses was like a perfect like mix of like this guy's in serious military garb while also wearing these kind of ridiculous looking sunglasses and just kind of really adds to his character being this deranged lunatic but so they, they basically have all these people hostage and he he does we all saw this in the trailer like he, he jesse Blum is in the movie for probably 20 seconds not 20 seconds he's probably in the movie for five minutes, five minutes 10 but minutes, two minutes, minutes of those we've seen in the trailer he's like what kind of american are you it interrogates yeah. them basically find, trying to find out what side are they on and mm-hmm. this is was one of maybe my least favorite part of the movie where first up we get wagner mora he says he's from florida and we basically kind of realize okay we're cool with florida florida's cool like he's okay with that then uh, he kind of goes to like i think kirsten dunn's kaylee spaney who both say they're from like missouri colorado Kaylee Spaney's in the middle. missouri yeah and kirsten dunn's colorado yeah so middle american he's like okay we're cool with them um and at this point we've established that this guy we already know this at this point this guy has killed dozens of immigrants dozens of people who are not american he we've already had multiple people say answers that he's okay with why why guy, say hong kong why say hong kong uh, it just doesn't make sense how garland just does not respect journalism's intelligence he thinks they're dumb he thinks they're they're so committed to the truth think about like war journalists journalists in general are masters of getting the story and trying to bend their own story to get in, like get further, get closer to the truth, get into dangerous situations. They've had to do things before where they've, they're not going to tell the truth in order to get the right outcome, to get further, to get the image, to get the story. This guy saying Hong Kong made me so get obviously get shot so, and killed immediately. Yeah. yeah. I hate so that. Stupid. How stupid to be. <laughs> yeah. So absolutely. It, it, staring at a I grave. understand, I understand they're thing. like i've never been in a situation where someone is holding a gun to my chest and my life is on the line but at that's when you got to make the crazy decisions to not say i'm from hong kong all you gotta had, throw out new york too. he didn't just panic yeah, he yeah, was like, yeah because this guy is him. this is the guy we just met in the in the car chase we just met him he's like a friend of wagner mora um mm-hmm. and and he is is like crying because his buddy his the other buddy who was in the car got shot earlier with no questions asked that other buddy but they're both the only people that aren't just like white male or not white male sorry just white people um and he says hong kong how dumb like he's crying because like his friend got shot so he's got 10 it's like five second scene or 10 20 seconds whatever just just say New York, say Maine, throw out Michigan, like any state in the U.S. Yeah, so dumb. I'm, I'm with if you're you. listening to this, you might be thinking like, well, he wasn't white, so clearly he was going to be shot. Wagner Mora is Brazilian, but he says, yes. Yes. like in the movie, I don't I don't know if, in, like I'm saying Wagner Mora, the actor, is Brazilian. So he looks Brazilian. Yeah. He looks someone who's as, crazy, as crazy well, as Jesse Plemons. He has an accent. Yeah, yeah. Nice. someone someone as racist as Jesse Plemons in the movie is gonna you if he was just gonna kill anyone who wasn't white, he would have killed Wagner Moore, clearly. But Wagner Moore says he's from Florida, so Jesse Plemons' mind does the calculations like, okay, he's moved here, he's an, he's, he's an American now, he's a citizen. So just because he wasn't white didn't mean that was a death sentence for the guys from Hong Kong. So he easily could have just mm-hmm. said, like, he's from, yeah, like you said, like New York or whatever, and he would have survived. So the fact, and he went last too, which is what he makes it even worse. He's like, the last yeah, person. Yeah, it's not like, like he went first. He didn't go first. So people may have learned from this. He went. We'll let the you teacher off. gave him the answer key. Like, he had the answers to the test in front of them. He knows Colorado, mm-hmm. Missouri, and Florida are all cool. <laughs> like, just yeah. say one of and those. And he's man. just, he just left New York. 
So like mm-hmm. he's he's been in New York. It's not like he's fresh from Hong Kong, like that mm-hmm. he just got to America, still learn. Like he's he's been here. He knows what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but no, shot and killed instantly, dumb. which there's also so like the sound design of this movie, I think, is great, but also the camp said I think there's some over usages of silences, and there's like you know how people say silent. jump scares are cheap in oh. horror. There's a lot of just like cheap, like quick bang, quick shot, like make you jump to your seat. I'm like, oh god, like so annoying. But um at this point, we a guy who we haven't talked about basically the whole movie because Alice Garland decided to treat him as just a throwaway waste of a character, anyways, is Stephen McKinney he Henderson. Was, the go. This is the most obvious. And okay, no. spoiler alert. No. We're in spoilers. He dies. We've this is the most obvious. Yeah. Well, no, this is the most what he does obvious death. They what he did before that. How he gets to me to be. Yeah, sorry. He he drives up right and, and runs over Jesse Plemons and uh uh nameless the guy. And uh, go straight army in. guy. Haley Spaney yeah. ends up in the, the pit of bodies again. The whole thing slows down, sound goes down exposure whatever They're crawling slowly through all these bodies and bodies yeah powder. which that is a good shot like her laying in the body of like that's a good shot for a civil war movie but i, I think it's a i don't think it makes yeah, up for it but a that's point. a good shot i think it's a pointless shot though, because i think the whole point i was going to trying to make is you know throughout he's trying to expose her you know little by little more but she's clearly already exposed to it from the very start and that's fair but it it kind of leads up to which we're going to go over at the end kind of you know in the end see what she does and it shows you know she's so desensitized at that point but i think it's like when you're doing that so often throughout the film these little tidbits of this exposure for it it's so amateurish in my opinion and i think again it comes back to that god not trusting his own imagery that's the issue and i think this mm-hmm. this seems exactly that i think it's pointless mm-hmm. like i i get the the bodies thing but i just think We've already done this now. We don't need to continue yeah. doing this over and over. I, you know, I feel like laying in a bot in a in a what is it, ten foot hole of just bodies would like fuck me up. <laughs> but um, so like that, like watching it was that that was a good shot in my opinion. And I liked like the this is the one time I was like okay with the sound going out. It was every other time that irked me because it just didn't feel as impactful as this moment. Um, I would have liked if we didn't have, if they didn't have the. Uh, gas petrol uh, gas station scene, that's you know, what I mean, for, and that's fair. And they kind of removed it, and then that was like the big exposure moment. Mm-hmm. Cool, you know, I think that, but it's just the fact that they just dangle them throughout. Mm-hmm. You know, we've had that now, we don't need to see that again. That's my yeah. issue with it. That's fair, yeah. Um, um but yeah, Stephen McKinley Anderson saves the day, runs him over, um, because he he hangs back because he he's old and can't he's run like away the fast. old smart guy yeah he's the old smart guy <laughs> old yeah. smart character yeah. which like, that's then, all he is in this that's all he is in this though yeah and he's a charming person but i didn't care from mm-hmm. one bit in this movie when he died yeah. i did not care at all i, I knew was, that like, from the start i said one of these people are gonna die and it's going to be stephen mckinley henderson like i i locked that in so quickly because you knew one of them was going to die we'll get into it later on a different one that i didn't call but uh like knew from the start because he's just he's a nothing character in this he's always hanging back because he's the old wise guy who doesn't want to put himself in too much danger and he's like he's like not even that wisdomous but he he's like taken from the old man kaylee spaney take sleep when you can that's nothing no shit like yes sleep when you can like no shit man uh and you're not sleeping so are you even taking this advice you know um but it's yeah, funny that's that was, that was exactly how it goes down he's like take it from me been in this game for 40 years if you get an opportunity to sleep sleep yeah like that's wow. his big like that's, that's his big, big i'm wisdom moment. moment yeah, yeah like, that's crazy i was so obvious he was gonna save them as well like it was just it was so obvious that yeah was gonna happen. Have, because I they shot waiting. the two other guys dead and so he's obviously heard the gunshot so he's obviously going to go investigate it and he's not going to walk mm-hmm. out there so he knew he's coming at some point but i think he gets shot like while he's driving up on them or maybe when they're driving away driving away and then they don't yeah. they don't find out until like mid car mm-hmm. like a few minutes later when they're driving the yeah. car he's like i can't drive he's like why and then obviously they find out he's been shot um, yeah mm-hmm. And they go to is that when they get to to, to Charlottesville after this? That's it, isn't it? Yeah, they got to like that global aid station. Yeah, yeah, the aid station. Yeah, and then so. they wheel out like a casket for him or whatever, dead body, take him away. So at this point, he's dead. Left literally zero emotional impact on me. Did literally him, nothing. Whatever. Literally yeah, nothing. nothing. Which is a shame because I was more bummed he wasn't in the movie anymore. Yeah, he's the goat. Man. Like that's the most bumming part of it. We it's missed like, him in Dune too. I was uh, hoping yeah. for him next. Damn. But, this. So at this point, it's just the trio now. It's Kaylee Spaney, 
Wagner Mora and Kirsten Dunst. They're at this global aid station where you kind of get the first real set. So at this point, you kind of see the Civil War as like group shooting against each other. There's kind of standoffs at like schools and museums and there's like dead people. Like, but at this point, you kind of get the real sense of like how fleshed out and developed this resistance is because you see the Western forces have all these helicopters, mm-hmm. precision airstrikes, planes, uh, Humvees, soldiers that are seemingly heavily trained, basically U.S. military. So, like, at this point is when you first kind of get the first scale of, like, how yeah, this developed insane. this resistance is. And then you, you – so they're kind of just getting aid at this point, eating up, healing up, and uh, med, you get med some med kind med. of just scenes I didn't really think were that interesting with, like, Kaylee Spaney developing her film and talking to mm-hmm. Kirsten Dunst about her start in her career – didn't really nothing there was really enough for me to grasp on to basically just kind of like a the whole point Wasn't of the scene earlier, was that am i thinking I'm wrong i thought that was i earlier. don't know i think you might be it might have been earlier but, but that was in way, you stadium. got those scenes and it didn't work yeah okay that was in the stadium wasn't that thing but they were yeah. like the film but uh yeah so at this point they they kind of hear from another journalist saying like the western forces have the president surrounded it's game over western forces have won this it's all a matter of just you know, crossing the finish line at this point, but they they they've done it. They've done the deed. This final big initiative to go to the Capitol and and fully take it over and get the president is is going to be underway. So they start to head there. This is kind of where the movie ramps up to be the end of it. They get to DC, and it's just this is where the big budget comes in. This is where all the the explosions and gunfire and fighting and and truly just war action chaos really breaks out. Most of it was more intimate one-on-one four on four type fighting. We've kind of saw scattered throughout the road trip for the majority of it, but yeah, it's a, uh, I don't know. What, what do, is there anything to really touch on here before they get to the white house or. I, I think that generally speaking, if, if con, if, if the context wasn't there for this scene, if I hadn't already had the issues throughout the film, I, I thought this was pretty good. I, I, would like, I, I did like this. No, I did scene. like this scene actually. Yeah. I liked a good amount. Uh, well, until they until they come across the president, I would say, and kind of until they get. Yeah, no, like the war scene, the fighting the scene that is the big budget. Yeah, yeah. I, I liked it. it. I because... thought it was shot pretty well. I thought it was intense. I thought it worked. This, and I think they needed the scope as well. Like Tyler was saying, this kind of scale of what it's come to at this point in time as well. You know, I, I think this is a good idea for a movie. I think Alex Garland butchered it a little bit, had some redeeming moments, and this was a redeeming moment in my opinion. Like, this is why I say, like, for every moment I didn't like, I like. I like this part. This is what the movie should have been. Civil War, I don't know. I You can tell it a million different ways, and I understand, like, telling it through the perspective of a journalist, but if you're not going to give them the respect they deserve like tyler's mentioned it time and time again then what's the point i feel like this is kind of what people expected the movie to be and maybe i'm wrong for expecting it to be a little bit more wary because it is civil war um but i think like they did well with this moment um and the whole movie doesn't have to be that but like you'd expect more things kind of like this um, i just and I, I don't know if i needed that i just i i think that Ali, i think alex Gollum was the wrong person for the film like I think I just don't think. I agree. I agree. As a writer, I don't think he works within within a film like this. Within a film that's gonna have such big scope, and you know, inevitably, whether you like it or not, and whether he likes to remain apolitical or not, there's gonna be some politics that need to go into. I don't know if he was the the right choice, but I, yeah, I didn't. I didn't mind. You know, I thought a lot of it was, was was pretty well done. To be fair. Yeah. Um. So yeah, the, the war was cool. I just wish we got some sort of context in this movie and. I feel like the again the the dollar store stupid response is well that's the point it doesn't matter the context because it's people killing people war um, it's such war a war is bad yeah it's yeah. Great. great I agree great insight, great insight. but how, so I mean just logically thinking this civil war had to go on for almost a decade if a resistance force is at the point where they have a full equipped military with planes and it's like normality and they yeah. all feel like they're trained like seal team like navy seal like they're these are very well trained well developed they have a full arsenal there's no way this has happened in the past year or two this is and the reputation like Kirsten Dunst has as well like the, the experience you'd imagine it's going to be like probably five ten years minimum i would say, yeah. like, say but you just get no context and there's stuff thrown out like an antifa massacre but they never say 
was Antifa yeah. massacred? Did Antifa yeah. massacre? You did he just throws out these buzzwords just, that just throws like, out buzzwords. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. it just all feels just kind of gross to me because Alex Garland, like, and I'm not saying like like we've seen time and time again people who are like not from a country are gonna make movies about people from a different country, but this coming out during like an election year, just very weird. Like it's just I, I just feel like to me and it, they're just trying to capitalize on money. They knew exactly what this movie was going to do, throwing out these buzzwords of stuff like, and they talk about like Portland Maoists or something like that. So it's like, how did that come to be? Because Portland's obviously very more like, you know, like hippy dippy type town. It's not uh, discreet how they throw these out as well. It's literally like, they'll just say them, you know, like yeah. it's not hidden amongst it. It's literally just like, Oh, let's just put that in place. And it makes the, the, means the script nothing. is a political hot button Mad Lib. Where they just yeah. fill in buzzwords to try and make you like, oh yeah, what could that be? Oh like, shit, yeah, yeah, I know that. It's yeah, and, and draw inferences for themselves, but no, yeah, he yeah. refuses to engage with anything. And I think another thing is when people say we want this film to not be apolitical or we think that's a weakness, people assume that it's like we want like people want the film to be a clear liberal movie that are anti-republicans, they're clear. Yeah, yeah. That's not what I'm, I want it to like have some political theory, have some, it's like, which I'm not a genius on, but I want some thoughtful discussion. Even if you don't agree, that's the thing. Yeah. It's like, and, and I, I've seen a few reviews that say this as well. It's like, Oh, um, the only people who, who wanted to, to not be able to in a sense or take some sort of stance or, or take a swing is, you know, the people who are, you know, radical left, radical right, whatever. I don't think that's the case at all, at all. I think it's just some some of us like a little bit more there. And I think a film of this magnitude, especially within the state of the world right now, especially, and America, of course, not that I know as much as you guys about that, but I think it's something that needs more discussion than it has. Um, and I don't think anything was delved into. And that's not me being a radical left, a radical right. It's nothing to do with that. It's literally just wanting more from a film that's about important life events that you know could well happen in a foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. Um so I think that's a stupid criticism. I think it's more the case where, I, and I don't say to people, you know, who like this film, I don't say you're an idiot. You know, I, I think it's cool. Like, I think th this is bound of interpretation, especially when it comes to, to a, a journalism point of view. But I find that a lot of the people who are liking this are just immediately pinning the apolitical, and, uh, oh, it's okay, they're just, you know, radical leftists or whatever, when it's really not the case. It's just people looking for more in a film that's literally about an american civil war you know set in modern times mm -hmm. so i don't really get that that criticism you know what i mean i just i don't i don't it doesn't make sense to me i don't get it yeah and i've listened to interviews too of alex garland and because people point to like saying like oh well clearly nick offerman is supposed to be like a donald trump and clearly this is supposed to be post january 6th where they kind of took over the white house and supposed to be the results of that but alex garland in, in interviews for this film multiple times said he is a centrist in the politics of america he yeah. is not left or so he's not like some people are trying to like infer Alex Garland's like by some messaging in this film, he's taking a stance, but he's been very clear in his press tour. He is in the center on American politics. Yeah, he's not he's hidden there. Not That's left all. or right. So anyone who's kind of trying to defend him by saying like he has politics in this movie, you're just missing them. He's clearly on one side or the other. He's made it very clear. He's, he's, he's centrist, but. And again, it's not like yeah. we're saying that you need to take this, you know, huge left stance. You know what I mean? That's not what we're saying at all. It's just, more is needed and that's why i don't think alex garland was the right choice but again like you said he's said in interviews that he's very very central on this you know he's yeah. very switzerland so to speak and if people are listening to this and still are saying like oh well like that's the point they just wanted to be centrist he wanted to just let the images speak for themselves that's totally fine if you interpret it that way and you like that just for me if that is truly his intent and what he wanted to go for that's just not a movie i'm interested in so that's why exactly. even if even like yeah you can't really use that on me as like a gotcha like that's what he's going for because if it is cool like that, fine perfect if you like it, I have no issues with you. Um, but for me, that's just not something I'm interested in in the films. To me, it was just kind of a waste of time if that is the case. But kind of going back, uh, we'll have a little more digesting thoughts. But just to get to the final end of this, they get to the point where the, the president's making a last stand. Clearly, he's surrounded. The Western forces are taking over D.C. And there's a couple of like Secret Service vehicles that leave the White House. And everyone kind of thinks, oh, the president's in there. He's trying to make a getaway. But really, it was just smoke and mirrors and curse and dunce kind of realizes that that these aren't there's just kind of trying to draw people away from the white house and they kind of all start running towards the white house to be like oh he's got to still be in there um, yeah there's some there's like a small team of military that follows them as well the western forces follow them in they get to the white house go through this trying to find out where he is basically then there's kind of this big standoff scene in the hallway where there's some secret service on one side and 
um, like journalists on the, and I think before this, what, there's like the, the secretaries or like the press secretaries, like kind of saying like, we're here to yeah, negotiate like terms. Kind of thing. Yeah. There's like, we, we want to negotiate a surrender. There's gotta be terms that he's not going to be harmed or whatever. And basically they're like, fuck you. We don't care. Shot killed. Sure. Dead. Um, d- don't really care for that either. Uh, thought that was kind of stupid scene, Whatever. but uh, at this point, this is kind of when they have the standoff in the hallway where we get them shooting back and forth, and Kirsten Dunst and Kaylee Spaney are also shooting, but with a camera as opposed to a gun. And it's like, I don't know, I hated this scene too because I, I think the imagery he's trying to go for here is that like journalists are shooting as well, but it's a camera instead of a gun. So that's why she when she's kind of running back and forth like a military guy, but to me, it just comes off as like. Again, these people are so stupid, so upset. He treats war journalism and journalism in general as if they're like paparazzi, it feels like, where they're so obsessed with getting the shot that nothing else matters. So Kaylee Spaney's is running back and forth. Kirsten Dunn's running back and forth trying to get these shots of the corridor as if that's going to be some impactful, like the best shot in the world. This is going to change the world if I get yeah. this particular shot of someone shooting down this camera angle. Um, and just a, an all-time bozo moment where Kaylee Spaney – they try and show again, like Seth said time and time again, she's been desensitized this whole film to all these, this violence, yeah. but somehow like she just gets sh- shocked once again, where she's like in the middle of the hallway and just like can't move. She's like, Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm about to be shot. Like I'm just pausing here, like a deer in headlights. Then Kirsten Dunst goes and tries to save her and push her out of the way. And we forgot time, to mention the Kirsten oh, yeah, what I meant. like about, did we mention it? Like about how she's clearly, throughout the film and obviously when, when we get to this point when we get to Washington she's like clearly at the point of a, of a true psychological breakdown at mm, that point yeah. and obviously that goes into it and it's like Kaylee Spain has seen that and it really is like the antithesis of, of the point in life so she's like going through hell at this point like mm-hmm. she's at the end of her wits so to speak but yeah sorry carry on yeah I thought the screaming scene where was was a, was a good impactful scene where she's kind of like the only for, one I would say emotionally within the film yeah, for me I thought that scene was great um, yeah but yeah, so at this point, just all time trope that we've seen in so many movies where it's like someone's in the middle of getting shot and they're just pausing there. So then someone else quickly runs yeah. in, pushes them out of the way, gets shot and killed in the, in the process. And then Kaylee Spaney and a, ver- a very nightcrawler like type moment where she's like, oh, take a picture of you, like Joan Hardo does to Riz Ahmed. So Kirsten Dunst is dead. Um, I don't know. I, I kind of hated this scene. I, I felt like, again, I didn't really like it. I, it, I feel like the intent here is to show that, like I said, journalists are trying to shoot just like military people are, but they're shooting a different shot. And also that Kaylee Spaney is so far gone at this point to be in this so devoted to getting the shot and so devoted to her craft that she doesn't care about people. Whereas we saw Kirsten Dunst is going through these psychological breakdowns. She had a picture of Stephen McKinley Henderson dead, deletes that one. So they're clearly on opposite ends at this point. I just hated it. I just hated how many times they made Kaylee Spaney look so stupid, so dumb, so naive when even though like they try and show you throughout the film that she's getting more smart. She's talking to these wiser, older journalists. She's getting experience, but then she's still just stupid. It's just, I don't know. I hated that shootout scene at the end. Yeah, I didn't really like it either. I think it's kind of pointless again. Um, and I think that's the kind of... Um, her being in the middle, you know, Kaylee taking a shot. It's like I said earlier, it's just, it's all desensitization, uh, but then also she's new to it all and shocked at some points. I think it's very hollow and it's very, goes into a very point of, you know, just so tropey at that moment in time that so we've seen a million times before. And I think that Kaylee Spaney's character is just utilized so poorly, whereas it's like just this, they treat as little girls, like naive and whatever. But she switches back and forth between so often. And that last moment was just like so riddled with cliches um, once they kind of get in um, into the building. And I also just think the the scene with the president as well is just kind of dumb, you know? Yeah, like, and then that's where we're at now. The very final scene in the movie, the president was under the table hiding the whole time. Silly. He gets out there. He gets dragged out. They kind of get the money shot they've been going for. Wagner Mora asks him yeah. the final question and then um, gets boom, killed, shot. Movie ends at that point, right? He basically gets shot and then movie over. Yeah. Uh, and then, like, is that? Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, yeah. I think so. And then the credits roll and you see a picture of him shot. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, so, I think that, yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. I think, I think it ends there. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, 
it just had nothing to say. We had no clue what got us to this point. We have no clue what's to come of it at this point. We have no clue what the president believed in that the Western forces don't, or like it basically, you know, it's a, it's citizens killing citizens. People should be on the same side in theory, killing each other. So there should really be no right or wrong, but, or in terms of like, it's just terrible either way, but we, like, we don't know, like it, or should we be happy the Western forces got there? Should we be, should we be like, these are the worst people in America that got overthrew America? Or is this like them saving America from a dictator? We really don't mm-hmm. know. Just didn't have anything to say. Um, it, another thing is like this movie just trying to say images should speak for themselves and you don't have to have context. That's why it's kind of apolitical. It's very in the center, throws out these buzzwords and it's kind of like, it's up for your interpretation, but that just seriously downplays the role of journalism in the world. And I, I was reading some other critiques. It's like, there's no such thing as a neutral camera, but this movie tries to present it as a camera is neutral. You just take an image and things are spoken for themselves. And that's so many times in the world right now that news stations will run with things and spin things and put political twists on them. But images themselves are just purely apolitical. There's nothing to be said about like, and it's just not true. Like journalists, like you're just treating them like they're robots that go into these situations with zero feelings one way or another and just mindlessly point their camera at stuff and then just spit it out of a machine and then people will take it and should interpret it through themselves it i don't know there's no i just don't think there can possibly be something that's just an unbiased camera or an unbiased image and this movie tries to say there is just didn't work for me i didn't there's just I, i don't know and like the whole like town they go to to shop for dresses and where they like they stay out of the war and like oh we just don't deal with the war here but there's then they show like there is militants on top of the roofs there so i don't know like this movie almost to a fault had nothing to say because like it felt like so many times like he was about to say something but didn't and like purposely didn't and it it just felt like a very dumb movie. I just think it was a very stupid movie. I just didn't like it. Uh, there's some technical craft there that I enjoyed. I thought the performances were mostly great, but all those performances are kind of wasted on me by how dumb the characters were. So like, even though Kirsten Dunst, Stephen McKinley Anderson, Kaylee Spaney, Wagner Mora, Jesse Plemons were great. I thought their characters were so underdeveloped that it just wasted their acting abilities. And yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really have anything else to say. I'll, I'll leave it to you guys, but yeah. Nothing else really. Nail on the head. I'm good. Yeah, so well, we spoke about that for a while. Hope everyone mm-hmm. enjoyed. Uh, so 2.5 from me. Honestly, I might lower it because I've, I've been quite negative, not that positive. So it seems a bit wrong. 2.5 from Cam, uh, 50 out of 100. I will respect your rating system, Cameron. <laughs> and then a 1.5 for Tyler and a 4 from George. Mm-hmm. And I should say as well, like, it's, 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 this is one of those films I do like this. So, you know, when I look down, like, what my mutuals have rated it, it's, this is the one in a while where it's like so either end. There's actually ones mm. and there's actually fives. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. So on average right now on Letterbox is a three point eight, which is very. What's high. your friends' average though? Two point nine. Oh, mine's a three point four. Mm. So mine's a bit higher than yours. Yeah, mine's a two point nine versus a three point eight, which is crazy dispar- disparity. Um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> But yeah, let us know what you thought about Civil War. I think me and Tyler are going to quickly move on to Fallout. So, Tyler, did you finish season one? I did not. Oh. But... Okay, so basically, obviously, Fallout is, if you don't know, obviously, it's an adaptation. Of, well, not an adaptation per se, but it's a, a game adaptation. I guess it is a game adaptation. And it's um, if you don't know about Fallout, it's uh, set in a post-apocalyptic world in, in the US where people like, live in bunkers and there's the, the surface, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I am someone who's played Fallout not for a few years. Um, I don't think you've played it, Tyler. When you say you played Fallout, what do you mean? Like all the games or like just I, New I, Vegas I, 3? I, I've my fave. I try to think now. I played all the games at one point in my life, but I haven't played any for the last four or five years. But they're actually, um, I don't know if you saw, they're doing an update on Fallout 4 for for, for new for current gen, so PS5 and stuff, which is really cool. Going out like in uh, two weeks, which I'll definitely be playing. Fallout 4, definitely my favorite. I didn't love the last one, but I, I know about the games. Not, I'm not like a mega fan of them. I always liked them. Um, but essentially the games, you know, to before we go into what our thoughts are on this, you don't have to play the games to watch this because the game, it, whilst it's canon to the events that happen, the games aren't connected. They're separate stories. And I imagine it'll be a bit like that with the, with the, the shows as well, where it's the show is a completely different entity to the games in terms of the story sets out. Um, there's references in the, in the, in the show, which I'll go into in terms of 
um, relating to the games. Like uh, uh, there's one related to, to Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 4, whatever. Um, but yeah, Tyler, if you want to give, I know you haven't finished it yet, but if you want to give kind of your, your thoughts so far, I don't, where are you up to at the minute? Uh, episode four. So okay, that'd be uh, halfway, right? Spot. Yeah, yeah. there's eight episodes. Yeah, yeah. Well, and this, this, so this was supposed to come out like Friday, but then they like surprise moved it up to like Tuesday or Monday and they dumped them all at once. So I initially thought it was only the pilot. So I like tweeted out like a classic, like, Pilot was great, awesome, and then I was like, "Oh shit, the whole season's out." Okay, I'll keep diving. Yeah, in. I don't like that. I prefer that to do it no, for sure weekly. You know, yeah, I'm definitely a weekly guy. Because I think the the reactions are generally pretty positive to this. So I think this could have been one that you know discussed on a weekly basis, get some traction on social media, but it got dumped so fast. So I haven't finished it yet, but it took me a little bit. Like I love the pilot, but it took me a little bit to understand where like what we were doing here. So I, I have played some of the games, but I mean in terms of the way that the show is going to go, because we've talked time time again about different movies and shows about being like too clean but like when they're down in the vaults like that makes sense because they're like separated from society and should be like more clean but then once we got like to like the surface we saw like no this was pretty gritty so i, I initially I was like oh there's gonna be like a too clean version of fallout what i was expecting but i think it, it really wasn't when i when we got more scope beyond just the vaults i thought we the it was a gritty lived in world and, and i thought the attention to detail was really great as well mm. but also, it just took me a while to understand like how our rated are we going? Because like the movie starts out, and I'm like, you know, okay, like, or the show starts out, and I'm like, okay, like don't know how what audience they're going for. If they're going for like teenager audience, or if they're gonna really make this more gritty and grimy. But pretty quickly, then you get to see, you know, you have like a sex scene, you have some pretty brutal violence with some stabbing, oh, some slit like, knives, yeah. throats being slit, and like a guy yeah. cutting his ankle wide open with a razor, like. So pretty quickly again, like once I got like halfway through the episode, I was like, okay, so I know now this is going to be grittier and grimier than I thought, which is good. And this is not going to shy away from being violent, being R-rated. Um, so was very happy with that. Um, I love Kyle McLaughlin. Just just a great dude. Love him. Um, I know the the, the kind of, at least from where I'm at, the, the woman's kind of like the main, uh, and I forgot her name. I don't have it pulled up, but she's kind of like the main person we're following. But yeah, all yeah. the supporting cast I do enjoy as well. But yeah, I, I really enjoyed. It. I thought the the fights choreography so far has been really good. I think the characters have been developed quite nicely. And I have played the video games. I haven't played any of them all the way through. It's more like I've popped in and out and played a couple bits of Fallout New Vegas and Fallout Four, like with some buddies. But um, so I can't really speak to like how faithful adaptation is. I've seen some people say. Um, have said the attention to detail, detail has been really great to the games. I've heard some people say that their nitpicks are that it's it's straying away from the game. So I'm sure, you know, anytime you're near and dear to something, if you're a huge fan of the Fallout games, you might have more critiques. But I've really been surprised by it. I haven't given a TV show a shot since Succession, and I've been really liking this. And it's been over a year since I've given a TV show a shot, like I said. And I, I, I think the world design is cool. I really love the aesthetic they went for. Um, even the opening scene with like Walter Goggins and the, the, the nuke going off, I thought was awesome. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, pretty so good. yeah, I really have nothing negative to say. I think the only negative I could say is that I'm not super positive on it. So like it's not a negative, but it's like I think it's really, really good. I don't think it's like the greatest thing I've ever seen, but I'm liking everything about it. So yeah. Um obviously don't spoil stuff because it just, like, just came out, but give me yeah, I want to hear your take because like you you've definitely played the games more than me and yeah, you've seen more of the show than me. Yeah, it's different. So I see, yeah, so I finished the the season. It's different though than like um you know like the last of us show, for example, where I do have that like massive emotional attachment because I've played those games so many times. This Fallout, I like the games, I've played them all. I haven't played them in years though, so it's not like I'm you know a Fallout mega fan or whatever. Um, but I think that I think it's really, really, really good. And I, I wasn't expecting anything from this. The only reason I watched it is because I saw that the opening reception was was pretty great. And I was like, I'll play the games, let's well watch it. Attention to the detail is the main thing. I think the 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 value of production on this, the sets were fantastic, um, really really great, uh, especially in the bunkers on the outside. Uh, Walter Goggins being the absolute standout, he was fantastic. I won't go into detail, but I think it gets better. Uh, the show, I think, particularly the final two episodes are, are really really good, and the final episode kind of blew me away. But I won't go into that too much. Really like the cast. I think it whilst it gives the Easter eggs and the details of fans of stuff from previous games and stays true to it i do think you know at the end of the day fallout is a satire you know you need to be able to manage to strike that balance between satire and the uh, you know commentary on um humanity on, on warfare on survival whatever and i do think it manages to um which is which is great and i think that's always a hard task especially with something like you said r-rated it's gonna be managing the 
the grotesque imagery which he keeps and also the the satirical nature and also appealing to, to many different age groups which i think it does quite well and i think some of it's actually really funny especially into like later episodes um yeah so it maintains that great but i think what it also manages to do is kind of separate itself and literally just give a compelling sci-fi apocalyptic show which most of people would probably enjoy you know I, I i said in my review it's not the best show i've ever seen but i think it's really good and i think I, I hold it to an even higher standard because it's a game adaptation and we've seen a lot of shit game adaptations, you know? And with The Last of Us and this, uh, definitely things are looking up until Borderlands comes out, which I think looks terrible, but we'll have to wait and see that because I have played Borderlands as well. Um, but yeah, I think it has the right balance, visually really pleasing. Um, not everything worked, but mostly really good. And I think the, the end episode particularly, um, I was speaking to some of our Discord guys about this, was was definitely my favorite episode by by a good margin because there's a lot happens in that that sets up a uh, future. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to season two. I definitely will watch it, whatever that's. And it's confirmed as well. Season two mm -hmm. has been confirmed, mm -hmm. which is great. Um, so yeah, really, really liked it. Uh, I think if you're not, uh, if you've not played the games, that's cool. You don't need to have. I think people, everyone can enjoy this as just a standalone sci-fi kind of um, dark satire. Um, but yeah, really, really liked it. Um, I would be, I'm, I'm intrigued to see what you're going to think of the the kind of final two because it does take a bit of a swing. Mm -hmm. um, which is, yeah, which no, is I'm, I'm excited to get there as well. And even if I had thought, I probably wouldn't want to get too into spoilers in this anyways because like we said, it's a whole season that dropped like what people That's thought would have been like a, a couple days ago. But no, Wednesday? Like four, five days ago, yeah. Um, I wonder who like, because clearly Amazon, if you like knew they had like an ace in the whole year because they like moved the release date up. They immediately renewed it for season two. So I feel like they must have had some like test screenings or reviewers that like gave it such crazy overwhelming positivity out of the gate that they were like yeah let's bring us forward and let's renew it for season two like they really are all in on fallout now which is great to see because i think the cast they assembled is great and like you said the attention to detail on the sets are amazing so i'm um, excited we to see it continue to build out we should say as well that it's um what's it called uh Oh, Jonathan Nolan. No, Jonathan Nolan. Yeah, 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 Jonathan Nolan. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, he was you know, he one of the main guys of words in it. You know, Jonathan Nolan, Christopher Nolan's brother. Mm -hmm. Don. He wrote Interstellar with Nolan. What else did he write? Which are the Nolan films? Uh, pretty much all the early stuff, like Memento. Oh, I think it was up, up until maybe. Don't he might have helped with the Batman movies, and then don't yeah, I don't think Oppenheimer or Tenet. Tenet, yeah, so yeah, I, maybe Dunker. I'm pretty sure Dunker was at the cough point. I don't think he worked on Dunker, I think it was like the rises. Did he do anything between rises and Dunkirk? Uh, I'm sure they're still like Tenet. they're it's still Tenet. brothers. I'm sure they probably swap notes or at least ideas or run but stuff by each other, but yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously, he was, and I think that comes across. I think it's really well written. Um, but yeah, uh, really successful so far. Really, really enjoyed. I think a lot of people will get a lot of fun out of it. That kind of brings us to uh, another portion of the episode today where we're going to be going over Alex Garland and his kind of career. So we're going to be kind of moving through it. We'll just give a ranking. We're not going to go into crazy detail like we did with the right. war, obviously, um, mm -hmm. which went on for a while. But it's just going to be touching on um, his directed films and also briefly touching on his written films as well. So kind of just to just to run through his, his kind of career. Um, let me just get it up. Bad podcasting from me. Yeah, um, I did have go. it up. And then, okay, cool. Sorry about it. So in 2002, he uh, famously wrote the Danny Boyle directed zombie film 28 Days Later. In 2007, he um, wrote Sunshine, another Danny Boyle film. Uh, in 2010, he wrote Never Let Me Go, which I believe is a dystopian film, which I haven't seen. 2012, he was. The writer of Dread, which uh title alluded to earlier. And then in 2014, he made his directorial debut with Ex Machina. 2018, he came out with Annihilation. 2022, he came out with Men. And then obviously 2024, he came out with Civil War. And obviously, he will be writing um, 28 days later, uh, 28 years later, being a part of that. And also, I think Warfare was confirmed as well, his next mm -hmm. film, whatever that is. Um, but yeah, I think we'll start with obviously 28 days later being the first credit. We don't have to go into this too much because we did literally review this for a, a real time mm -hmm. um, episode, which is on our YouTube. If you want to see our full thoughts, go yeah, I'm there. Try and find which one that is, but yeah, carry yeah, on. a while ago. So obviously we reviewed it. Uh, Twenty days later, do you want to go into synopsis or anything? It's just kind of say general thoughts. Just general right. thoughts on his written stuff. So real quick, episode 101, six months ago, uh, George, Seth, and myself reviewed Twenty Eight Days Later. So we talk about it for thirty three minutes. So yeah, if you want to more about Twenty Eight Days Later, yeah. So I think we'll start with we'll start with Tom then. Sounds well because he wasn't on that. I haven't show. seen it since, or still haven't seen it. Uh, Fair, 
Fair enough. Yeah, Fair I've enough. only <laughs> seen I, of his written films. I've only seen Sunshine, which is also a uh, real quick uh, review. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I've only seen Sunshine of his written films, which I think Dread is maybe not a comic book movie, but a superhero movie or something. Like that. Movie, something I, I, yeah, I don't know if it's, I, I didn't know what it is, uh, but it seems like something I'd watch. So I don't know why I haven't seen it, but uh, I, of his written films, I've only seen Sunshine. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. I mean, uh, 20 I days later, obviously, we broke on the part on the uh, podcast. I, Love this film. It's one of my favorite zombie films ever. I think it showcases the apocalyptic world in such a gritty, gruesome way with this kind of dark tone. Killian Murphy is a genius. Um, you've got great ads who I love in it, Christopher Eccleston as well, and obviously Brendan Gleeson, all fantastic. I think that it's a fantastic commentary. I think it's Danny Boyle's best film by far. I think from the, the setup with the music when he's walking across the London Bridge, it's just incredible. Uh, like I said, we went over it on, on our podcast full, but I give this a, a four and a half. I think it's... Mm -hmm. Probably in my kind of top five zombie films ever. Um, amongst that, I think is really, really fantastic. Um, yeah, Tyler, I love, I love Twenty Days Later. Obviously, we'll get we got into more about it in our real quick, but four point five out of five for me. Love it. Thought it was written great. Think it shows the humanity side of the zombie apocalypse better than pretty much any zombie movie I've seen. Um, Danny Boyle, I think him and Alex Garland work really well together. Obviously, we're about to get into Sunshine. I think them together is a great duo. Um, but yeah, 20 Days Later is probably my favorite thing Alex Garland's ever done. So yeah, I, I didn't come right. 20 Days Later is my number one. It's definitely my favorite thing Alex Garland's done. So yeah. yeah it, well, we just kind of fucking spoiled it now, Tyler. <laughs> well, I was, I was saying we were just going to rank just the directed stuff. So that's my bad. Okay, I was, fine. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I, I thought we were just going to rank only directed movies, the written. And yeah. you've got that 4.5 as well. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, in 2007, he came out with Sunshine, which I actually watched today. I know, obviously, you guys did similar type with Calm. Episode I was on that episode. Yep. 110. 110. So, obviously, you can go over there to listen to like, their full thoughts. I wasn't on that. Um, I only watched it literally two hours ago for the first time, so I'll give you my kind of quick thoughts. Mm -hmm. Really, really liked it. Visually breathtaking, kind of this mysterious project with just, like I said in my review, like tragedy just lingers throughout. Um, really well-assembled cast. There's a lot of people in this who I didn't actually know, which was well, didn't know we're in it, should I say. Mm -hmm. um, one that clearly drew a lot of inspiration from, I think Danny Boyle said this in interviews, like 2001, very alien-like within the opening third, uh, opening uh, first. It takes a, a big, I won't spoil anything, but it takes a big tonal shift, and uh, you've heard of that before. One thing I heard about Sunshine is how contentious the ending is in the final act. I really liked the ending. I thought the ending was really, really good. I think the tonal shift worked. I think it distinguished itself. I think it kind of was a myriad of different genres. Um, really, really liked it. I thought, it was, I thought it was dark, I thought it was scary, I thought it was genuinely tragic as well. Um, I gave this a four out of five. Um, did not predict the ending at all. And for me, it really, really worked, which is great. And I think it's one that will uh, do nothing but appreciate, you know, on multiple watches as well. I think this will just get better and better. And I thought Kelly Murphy was just incredible as he always is. So I, I really, really liked Sunshine. I thought it was I thought it was great. I'd love to see it on a big screen because I can mm -hmm. imagine like seeing that on IMAX would be crazy. So. Yeah, I wonder if they'll ever re-release it just because so this movie has a cult following Sunshine, but definitely only a cult following, which surprises me that it hasn't gained more because we have obviously best actor winner Killian Murphy from this year, best actress winner from last year, Michelle Yeo. Same as 28 Chris later. Evans. Like, Same as 28 Days Later, in terms of like it right. kind of has a following, but it's not like I mean 20 days is probably more 20 days later is definitely bigger than Sunshine. Yeah, it's, yeah, 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 it's bigger. But I mean, in terms of like I mean, you can't even watch 28 Days Later now, you know. That is crazy. Like, you can't even watch it. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Not by a that, though, now, 28 years later and whatever's coming yeah, out. Yeah, they have to. They have to. It was on yeah, Max for a while. It was on later, Disney Plus yeah. for a while, and then just took it off. And yeah, it's like a yeah. forgotten film. It's crazy. It's so good. You know? Yeah. I love Sunshine. I know we're gonna rank the directed films, but just purely in terms of like written stuff. That's why, like I said, 20 Days Later might be my favorite because Sunshine's right up there with me. 4.5 out of five. Love Sunshine. Um, we talked about it in a real quick episode 110. So we kind of had like pretty close back to back uh, Alex Garland yeah. and Danny Boyle episodes because they're, they're again together here and I think them together work so well together. Um, Cam, you didn't like Sunshine though, right? Uh, I liked it. three, three and a half, like 71 out of 100. Um, I liked it. I didn't love it as much as you guys. Like, I, I didn't care for the characters as much, even though I liked the cast a lot. I didn't care for the characters a ton. I think the soundtrack was great, the visuals were great. Um, the ending, um, you like caught me off guard. Yeah, I liked the ending, but I, I just don't think I was as enthralled in the movie as um, 
as I wanted to be. Um, and it's also just, it's not one I've like thought about since, like I haven't thought about revisiting it in any way. So it didn't like grip me as much as I would want to, but I, I didn't, I did not like it. Just didn't love it as much as like, I know this one of George's favorites. I know Tyler, you liked it a lot. Seth, it sounds like I, I think you said four out of five. Um, so I think does George have it out of five? Yeah. Is George this, a, it. Yeah, is this yeah, yeah. a first time we've gone like five, four or five, four and a half, four, three and a half, like, with all these, there's probably more movies Maybe. but first time i've noticed um yeah. but yeah i i, I don't I, I don't think it's bad by any means but definitely not my favorite um yeah it, it, it real quick review you can go watch that yeah tyler quick thoughts yeah I, I i i think i don't really have anything more to say in sunshine i really love it though but i don't think it's well I, have any of us seen never let me go no so that is one we want to know so he did he wrote Worth Never Let Me Go, which is a British dystopian romantic tragedy uh, directed by Mark Romanek in 2010. Uh, Andrew Garfield, Garfield. Harry, Mulligan. 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 Harry Mulligan and Kieran Knightley. That's a that's sure. cool. Andrew Garfield, what a cast. All right. What a trip. Uh, uh, yeah, haven't seen it, so no idea. No. Anyone else seen it? Nope. No, but hey, let's move on. Andrew Garfield's in it, and he's going to watch it now. True, true, true. I will say just briefly before we get on other stuff. So the beach and the Tesseract are two films. He didn't write the screenplay, but they're based on novels written by Alex Garland. The beach in 2000 yeah, stars Leonardo is, DiCaprio. The beach so. is mid. I can't lie. It's yeah. He, Alex, like I said, Alex Garland did not touch these movies. These are just he purely wrote, the books too. that were adapted. Fascinating that he wrote books. I didn't know that. So that's yeah, he was yeah, started the novelist and screenwriter and now director. And now it sounds like he's going back to screenwriter. And then maybe he just yeah, goes back to novel. He's going just a, go and work with Danny Boyle again. That seems to work for you. Just go and do yeah, that. Exactly. We're like that Re regressing. Yeah. Uh, uh, 2012, like Tyler said uh, earlier, I think he said he watched this week. Dread, a sci-fi film directed by Pete Travis and written and produced by Alice Garland. I haven't seen this. I've actually heard really good things about it previously. So Tyler, I haven't actually heard your thoughts. So if you want to you know, go into your thoughts. Yeah. So I, I'm not familiar with dread in terms of like comic books or anything really about it before going into this. Same. So there's, no idea. there's a drug in it called slow-mo that makes people's decisions be the reaction time. gets super slow. And the way they show it in the movie is super slow-mo throughout. So I'm like, I made a joke. Like how is there literally a drug called slow-mo in this comic book? And Zack Snyder wasn't chomping at the bit to be the director <laughs> yeah. of this. Cause there is so many super slow mo long shots in this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, man, Zack Snyder probably saw this and was wanking. I don't know, but this movie it's so hyper violent and gruesome. Like the gore is crazy. Like they go super. Like that's what they, they clearly do it intentionally. They want to make this super gory and gross and grimy. Lots of blood splattering everywhere and just very excessive, which I didn't really love. Uh, Domino Gleason's in it, and he's such a kooky, weird, silly guy in this movie that I absolutely love. Carl Urban is who Judge yeah. Dredd is, but you never see his face. He's just kind of under the mask the whole time. Um, Lena Headey, uh, you know, from Game of Thrones, from 300. She's the drug empire leader who I think she's pretty great, but they don't really give her much to do with. So pretty much it's, it's almost – this movie almost feels like a video game, which makes sense. It's like a comic book. Cause basically she runs this drug empire in a apartment complex. That's like on like the 150th floor or whatever. And they kind of climb floor by floor to try and take her down. And each floor is like a new battle of defenders and try to get to the very top. So it felt like, you know, very much like video game levels as you climb the tower. But um, yeah, pretty much the whole point of the movie is Olivia Thurby plays this like younger, uh, like, trying to become a judge, which is in this dystopian futuristic world where there's these, the, the society's basically collapsed. There's like 50 million people living in just one city at this point. And they have these like judges who are the judge, jury and executioner trying to keep order. And she's trying, basically trying out to be one with Carl Urban. And she goes through this whole mission with them and then tries to become a judge by the end of the movie. Um, but yeah, it, it was two and a half for me. I think I'm lower than most people. This movie definitely, Speaking of cult followings, I guess Alex Garland's like good at fostering those the movies he's touched on because this movie definitely has a cult following. Um, but for me, I was just kind of in the middle. By the end of it, I was just kind of exhausted with how much gore there was, which is again, like I'm not I don't get grossed out by gore. It's just at some point it's like this is just like, I don't know. I've seen enough of just blood splattering everywhere, and I've seen enough slow motion scenes. So um, yeah, in the middle. I think uh you guys might be a little higher on it just because it is decently regarded and most of my mutuals rate higher than me so um but yeah that's all i have for dread so okay 2014 this is where we move into his 
directed features he came out with with Ex Machina, um, starring obviously three main people: Damar Gleeson, Oscar Isaac, and uh, Alicia Vikander. Yeah, as her name. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Alicia. 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 Yeah. 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 We can't do that kind of whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Cameron, have you seen this? Yep. Well, I watched this pretty recently, not for not for this, just kind of oh, I think you did. I think yeah, it was yeah, on, oh, you watched that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it was on stuff. Max. And uh I, I'm a, I'm a big fan of it. I or a fan of it. I think I again uh I think it's around I forget what I gave it, a three and a half ish, maybe four. Sorry, I'm not prepared. Um, I should have been given that I haven't seen any of it. You gave it a four I'm on the letterbox right now. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So I, I, I was a fan of it. Definitely liked the start more than I liked the ending. I would say, I remember that. I think it was like really eerie. Um, and you're trying to figure out it's obviously about like AI humans and this, this coder played by, uh, uh, Oscar Isaac has created, um, an AI person basically to mimic, um, to mimic life. Right. Um, and and he's trying to he brings in Damal Gleason to test the the AI um, to see if he can tell if it's a person or not. Um, and I think it's like starts really eerie and intense, and you're trying to like wonder like can you tell is this person or can you tell it's AI kind of thing. Um, and then it's reveal like the big reveal uh, is his assistant's AI. So like that was one of the big reveals. Um, I can't remember the movie perfectly as I watched it. You know couple months ago at this point or maybe a month but um I, I remember liking the start a lot i think it starts really intense and then once it got, kind of things start unraveling i think it loses its footing a little bit um but it, it just re-released in imax if i'm not mistaken so yeah. I, I know people like really like this one i saw a ton of people like say hell yeah i can't wait to go see this um this re-release um but i i know people really like it and i enjoy it a good amount just uh, i i think it, i think the way it started it was tracking to be like a maybe not a five, but a four and a half for a while. And then I think it kind of loses its footing towards the end. Um, but uh, still a big fan of it. Uh, uh, Tyler? I think this, well, I, never mind. I won't, I won't spoil my rankings. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Don't spoil the rankings, but yeah. um, since we're going through the filmography, I don't think we're going to go like in, in depth into like the spoilers of the movies themselves, but like talking mm -hmm. like high level, um, I'm kind of similar to cam with this one. Like I, I do give it a four star, but the ending of it, I didn't think it was a bad ending, but it just ended in a way where I was a little more, I don't know. It felt like the beginning of this movie, the first act and second act set this up to be something super offbeat and different. And then I felt the third act was like, well, good, kind of a little bit more like kind of what I was expecting the route to go down. And I was kind of hoping like it didn't go down the route I was expecting it to go down. So I was kind of like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, fine. It's a fine ending, but I, the movie itself, I really enjoyed. I think, I mean, Obviously, it makes sense. Actors or directors like to kind of work with similar casts, but when you go through someone's filmography in a short time period, it's really interesting to see all the connections. We just talked about Domino Gleason was in uh, Dread, and now he's in this, and we see Oscar Isaac in this, who is also in uh, Annihilation, which we'll talk about next, and we see uh, Sonoya Mizuno has been kind of the common thread. has been in like all of Alex Garland's films, so he likes to kind of stick with a lot of the same people um, throughout, and I think Benedict Wong was in Sunshine and also was in Annihilation, so a lot of similar casts throughout all, all of his movies. And yeah, so Ex Machina really enjoyed it. I, Domino Gleason and Oscar Isaac have such like an intense chemistry between them. Like, because Oscar yeah, Isaac, they are really like, great. Yeah, Oscar Isaac is like a drunk in this, so that always adds the element of like you never know. Like, is he about to snap? Is he about to uncover something? Is he about to find something? Um, and, and it's kind of just a cool chess match for the first two acts of like wondering what does this AI robot know? What does Oscar Isaac know? What is being tracked? through the security systems and it's just like a really cool reveal of like this game of like there's all this artificial intelligence all these computers all the surveillance but like who's controlling what who's moving these pawns who knows what who's in control of what and it's really fun watching that unfold and that's why i kind of said like the third act was a little yeah. more generic than i thought compared to like the first two acts we're setting up but that's not a negative that's just like what holds it back from being like oh my god blow my mind off but very good like the and the visuals in this are super cool. Like the robot design with Alicia Vikander, like just like so uncanny, but like in a good way. Like it's just, I don't know, very cool movie. Um, yeah, I won't spoil where it lands in my rankings, but very much enjoy Ex Machina. Yep. So um, similar to you guys, I think the kind of first two acts are much better than the, the final third. I think the, the ending could have been explored a little bit more, um, but it's all, I still really like the film. I think it's, some of the shots in this are amazing. The visually, it's, it's it's 
incredible. It's kind of this methodical commentary, obviously, uh, like uh, Cam said, on human relationships, you know, AI um, versus humanity. And it kind of, Alyssa Vikander draws that faint line about figuring out, you know, what's real and what isn't uh, between human and machine. Um, I think it's profound. I think it, it works really well. You know, most of the time, I think, like Tyler said, Oscar Isaac and Don Mogulis have this really, you know, unique, intense chemistry throughout. I think they're both fantastic and, and Lissy Vikander is as well. Um, I won't spoil where it is. I really, really like it. I will admit I haven't watched it in a while. I'm going to say like about a year or so. So it's been a while since my last watch, but I don't think people think it's really going to change. I think it's a really, really good film. Um, so we can move on to 2018 where he wrote and directed Annihilation. Um, obviously, famously starring um, mainly Natalie yeah. Portman. Cam, you've seen this one yet? No, I wanted to this week. Didn't have time. Like, I thought I'd have time on the plane, but turns out flying um, with a child is a, is a lot more difficult than, than <laughs> um, you, you think. You know, it's not just getting on a plane and throwing something on the headphones and going. Um, so I, I wish I had time to watch it, but I, I did not. Because I know George holds, holds this one super high. Um, Seth, I think you like it. I saw Tyler wasn't as high, but um, I know George loves Annihilation. Yeah. Um, Tyler, I know you watched it like this week, I think. So if you mm -hmm. want to your yeah, just the other day. Yeah, so I think uh, Annihilation is, is pretty visually stunning. Um, I really enjoyed a lot. Like in terms of visuals alone from his films, I think this is up there for maybe my favorite visually, purely. Um, but Natalie Portman, I think, is great as well. I think a lot of the cast here is great. Oscar Isaac, again, kind of just like an unpredictable character in this movie. You don't, you don't get nearly as much of him in this as you do in Ex Machina. But he comes back from his special deployment, the special forces, and we don't really know like what's going on. Like, There's clearly some mystery here. We're not going to spoil too much. But they go into the shimmer world where this, is, this thing kind of taking over the world and engulfing more and more of it as years go by. And they have to try and figure out this lighthouse source. Like how, how can you stop this like mythical unknown world that's developing like this new plant life and DNA is cross generating, mutilating with like existing DNA. It's like a very weird world. That's kind of becoming a thing of its own. You have like very weirdly mutated alligators and, and bears. Um, but a lot of cool stuff in this movie. Um, I think it's very clearly trying to be about like self-destruction and being your own worst enemy. And we see that like, especially in the third act for sure. But I felt like similar to like a lot of things I felt like in civil war, I felt like it was just the writing wasn't there for the characters for me to care enough. Um, well, I think a lot of the ideas were awesome in terms of what the science fiction this movie was, but like it's all these people who basically go into the shimmer because they have nothing to lose at this point. And we kind of get this hint of an affair that uh, Natalie Portman had on Oscar Isaac while he was deployed. Um, so basically she's like has so much guilt from that so that's why she goes in there and then we have like another woman who basically all they say is like she just self-harms herself so then she's going in there because she doesn't really have much to live with. then there's like one who has cancer one who lost a daughter just felt like it was very much like you sit down at your computer for a writing session and like the first five things about your mind like oh this woman lost a daughter so she has nothing to lose woman has cancer nothing to like it just felt like it was very thinly just thrown on there and I feel like that was so integral to the plot of like these characters having nothing to lose. So therefore they're going into the shimmer and battling with their own inner demons and their own guilt and difficulties really kind of like made a lot of it fall flat for me. Although I do think like the ending, which is pretty divisive, I thought was awesome. Like I love the ending. They really go balls to the wall, pedal to the metal. Um, and the overall kind of reveal of when you find out what happens in the end and like, there's a little mystery there and it's like i thought that was really great so like as a sci-fi alone i'm probably a little harsh on this i feel like i'm closer to three and a half than i'm a three as a science fiction film alone i really enjoy it i think it's really cool but it's just so much of this movie is about like battling your inner demons and getting in your own way of your life and i just didn't feel like it was like fleshed out enough for me to be that interested in the characters um but yeah overall pretty damn cool movie yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like, funny enough, I'm kind of similar. I am higher on this film, primarily because I think it does a really good job of creating this dreamlike world and, and these sort of kind of creature designs and these. But I do think the commentary of tackling, you know, grief and vulnerability, battling your own demons is A, quite heavy handed at times and B, quite convoluted. But that doesn't actually rub me the wrong way a lot of the time in this film because I just think the beautiful, like, expansive world is just. 
amazing. And I love Natalie Portman. I think she's so, so, so good. And this, um, particularly the ending, like Tyler said, I think is my favorite part of the film. They take a, a massive swing. And I think for me, it works really, really well. I actually love the ending in this. It's one of those endings I've watched kind of multiple times without watching the film. Um, a lot to unpack, very kind of existential sci-fi. Um, and it is something that I usually like, just generally speaking, in terms of how um, they kind of work sway through it, kind of the methodical pacing throughout the you know the first half, especially. So I really like it. Um, probably what more than Tyler, not quite as much as George, as, as Cam kind of alluded to. Uh, George, George loves it. But yeah, I do really like Annihilation. And then we have his second most recent film, uh, 2022, Men. Talk about which... that drop off. It's uh yeah directed um directed written by Alice Garland again man came out twenty twenty two obviously starring well two people really uh Rory Kinnear and and Jesse Buckley uh, I remember just before I, I asked you guys opinions I remember seeing the trailer for this and be like shit yeah do you remember the do you remember the I'm convinced Sam went to go see this it movie. was that it was that like ha 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 like that that yeah. kind of like over in the trailer I was like oh my god this looks amazing not so much uh, Cameron. I haven't go first. You go first, Cam. Tell me what you think is. Uh bad. I have it at a 44 out of 100, two out of five stars. I feel like that's high. Um that I there were I think they're like the start of this movie again. Maybe that's just with Alex Garland. I feel like the start of this movie definitely better than the end. Um, but Apart maybe not as high. Apart from annihilation. Okay. Yeah, see, so yeah, 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 I can yeah, see that. One. Um, yeah, I agree. But yeah. It's just, it's too much. I get it. They're like the, the idea behind it is that is like um, the unset unsettling feeling of, of, of a woman whose husband has, has killed. It was it husband, boyfriend. I can't remember. I haven't seen it since the f showing uh, or first viewing. I'm not, never going to watch it again. Um, she, he, her husband killed her himself or maybe boyfriend. Um, she goes on this secluded retreat and it's just one man being a creeper um, on her and this idea of, of not being comfortable around men, um, um, but written by written and directed by a man. And again, not saying he can't do that. It just comes off a little it's, weird. It's very man written. Yeah, it's very man written. Like yeah, it's it's very man written. Man, at, one, man, at, man, 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 man. at one point, there's a back hussy, <laughs> um, a a person is birthed out of a back and it's just, it just, you know, I, I thought that the start was interesting and it has the, the, the what it, from the trailer, the, Oh, oh, oh like that, it, that was intense. That was cool. and, I thought know, this is going to be like scary. It's funny. It's just, like, yeah. Awesome. It's just not, um, the, the scene. I vividly remember the scene where he gets like cut in between the two fingers and then starts like choking her. Yeah. With that. Dude, it just, it hits a wall at one point and just falls off a damn cliff so quickly. Um, I, I can't remember it too well. I'm not going to rewatch it. Uh, but a 44 out of Andre just feels high for this movie. But I do remember liking the setup a little bit more. Um, it just uh, it hits a damn wall and falls off a cliff. Yeah, it's so weird. Tyler, I don't think you watched it on release originally, did you? So I'm assuming no, you watched I watched it when it came out on streaming. But oh, okay. Riley, Riley and I had this TikTok plan for going like, I, and we I ended up scrapping it because I I don't know I thought it was like a stupid joke. But basically, when we were, when this was in theaters, probably well a year and a half ago, I was gonna that was like, like two years ago now, you know. Yeah, I was gonna be I was gonna be like going to see men and then like me walking in the men's bathroom and then me walking out be like there was no movie played in there. Stupid fucking <laughs> joke. But we we planned that yeah, out, good, we were filming it. And and that I like was, it. I was yeah, did did not pan out. But so what's interesting is percentage of the film, I enjoy such a bigger percentage of men than I do Civil War. But movies aren't a mathematical equation. You can't just say, like, oh, I enjoyed 70% of men, but only 10% of civil war, so therefore men's better. Like it's not movies aren't mathematical equations like that but it did enjoy a lot of men like i thought the whole first half was super cool like this dread because like, you have like the stuff in like, the garden with the apples and stuff too and there, there's a lot of interesting ideas there i just thought the third act didn't work for me at all thematically what he's going for the imagery was very gruesome for the sake of being gruesome and just odd but 
with like the death of like like Cam said, I can't remember either, like either the husband or fiance or long term boyfriend. Very clearly a very long, impactful relationship. Um and he like commits suicide, I believe. He like jumps yeah, off a building. He, he, he and off a building. I thought the idea to show it like four or five times, if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. like him falling yeah. from the building. Yeah. Yeah. But I thought the way he was trying to tie that in, like was almost there. Like I actually really enjoyed like her like grief trying to deal with that, but then like the third act just kind of ruins a lot of it. But I did enjoy a lot of this movie. Like I think the first half of this movie is a very good paranoia filled thriller of this woman because yeah. I mean because Jesse Buckley is just so great and he, her going through these range of emotions, trying to uncover what the hell's going on in this like Airbnb almost type thing. But yeah, it, it just ends up the ending is just so abrupt and bad that it drags the whole movie down. Even though I do enjoy a lot of this movie and it felt like it was almost there. Um, but yeah, it's. I never thought the gap, like I tweeted this, the gap between men and civil war would be as close as it was, but I'm at the point where to me where personally, like they're like pretty much on a similar playing field for me. I, I do prefer civil war probably a little more, um, which isn't really I'm spoiling for our rankings. I mean, we all hate men, like men yeah. suck, men suck, yeah. men suck. Um, but yeah, it's, I did enjoy so much of this film though. That's why it's really disappointing that the third act. Cause like we talked about X Machina, the ending didn't live up to the first two thirds, but the ending is still good of X Machina. It's just a little, generic whereas the ending of men is anything but generic takes a huge That's swing a miss. Okay. which is fair play you know at least he took a swing which i respect you know i like right. stuff like yeah that, and just... it almost felt like the reaction being so negative to it was like what made him not want to take his biggest swing in civil um, war i guess i don't know could be weird but yeah uh yeah so as what you guys said i think it's like the issue is with this film i think cam you said it there's like you can't not get it it's such a in my eyes, a male-centric view on female abuse and womanhood, which I don't think it, it just comes to us as tone deaf and uninteresting. Um, aside from the the first act, which I think there was there was stuff there, like Tyler said, and there was stuff of intrigue and stuff I think could have been delved into further and stuff that, Jeff, that there was potential, definitely. Mm-hmm. But I think it comes across as muddled, it's convoluted. I think the ending is just dumb and nonsensical yeah. and again very male orientated commentary but i think that comes across uh there are there are some really there's some really you know cool moments of image, imagery in this and there are some you know i guess mm-hmm. creepy scenes um and i do like rory Kinnear and uh jesse buckley especially a lot i think she's fun. i think i've always said i think she's one of the best actors working today but yeah i i think it's very very a very very hollow missed. film really missed. Missed. <laughs> rory really? Kinnear always goes for it huh? no no, I no, not him. I think this whole movie is just a miss, though. Yeah, yeah I think that it's uh it's one that I think a lot of people think. Well, for me personally, I think it's very, very hollow, and I don't think there's much more to go into. You know, I think, mm-hmm. I think the potential was there. I think it could have been better, but it wasn't, unfortunately. And I also kind of hated the ending, like Tyler said. I think the first half is massively stronger. Um, but yeah, we kind of move into. Civil War. Uh, do you want to review Civil War again, or are we kind of covered with that one? Yeah, no, I got I another hour and a half we could burn. <laughs> oh, cool, cool. Uh, so yeah, if you want to say, obviously, um, if you want to go into our rate, rate of rankings for each for each film, Cam, I'll let you go first. Obviously, you've only seen I think three of them. Yeah, I don't think I'm an Alex Garlander, um, but my rankings would be uh, Men last 44 out of 100, uh, Civil War 50 out of 100, and then. 80 i think for uh ex machina uh ex machina i think is very clearly the best and maybe annihilation is i i still do want to check it out i'm probably watching it this week it's not on any streaming so that posed another issue like i couldn't download it before the plane and even mm. try to watch it you know mm-hmm. um i guess i could have if i wanted to pay for it but i, I didn't um so yeah it, I, i'll try to check it out sometime soon tyler yeah, so for me, I'm still going to have men in last place, but third place would be Civil War. They're very, very close, so and not much of a gap. And it's just I don't care to rewatch either of them ever again, so that ranking will never change because I'm <laughs> never going to revisit either. But yeah. four is men, three is Civil War, two is Annihilation. For people who are upset with my Annihilation ranking, I did just edit it to a three and a half because I kind of I made a comment said edit after time. That's not real talk. I realize I do like it a lot more because I think as a sci-fi, it is it works so well. It's just like the the themes and subject matter he's going for. I just don't think it hit as well. But as a sci-fi, it's great. And the ending, like me and Seth said, like I, I'm not thinking about it more. Like I do just love that ending. 
Um, but Ex Machina for me is like the clear number one. So yeah, Ex Machina one, then Annihilation, barely a gap between those two. Then a huge gap for me. And then Civil War men real close to each other. But for me, like I kind of alluded to earlier too, Sunshine and 28 Days Later, I hold higher than all four of his directed films. So I think he's better when he's writing and someone else can take it visually. Yeah. I um, So I'll go Men Last uh, at 1.5 and then Civil War at 2.5. Probably going to drop down to a 2 after speaking about it a little bit further. Um, I think speaking about things for a long period of time like on a podcast helps. Because then I quickly realize mm-hmm. I didn't really like this film, you know? <laughs> Uh, surprisingly, I actually, I actually go X Mac in a second, and I think Annihilation is first mm. for me. Uh, both are four star, so nothing really much in it. I just, yeah, I realize I like Annihilation. You need to watch it again. Uh, but like Tyler said, I think um, I probably have Sunshine and Twenty Days Later. Twenty Days uh, Later, especially uh, four point five, is by far and away my favorite Alex Garland worked on project. Um, who knows? Maybe Dread or what was, what was the other one? Never, never, never let me go. Never, maybe that will get right in there. Andrew Garfield. That's got a cast. Andrew Garfield. That's got a cast. Got a cast. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of our rated rankings and ratings for Alex Garland's kind of filmography. Let us know in the comments what you think. Let us know your favorites, least favorites, and what you think of the films. And we will move on to trailers of the week. We got a mm-hmm. good few of trailers this week. Probably the most notable one being Joker 2. Um, mixed reception across the board, but Tyler, what were your kind of thoughts on, on, on the trailer for Joker 2? So we've had this long media lead up to Joker of like, oh, it's, is it a musical or not? Oh, it's a jukebox musical. Oh, we heard Lady Gaga. Yeah. Like we had all these little dashes, but nothing, like the trailer still took me so off guard. Like I was just not expecting that. It's, it, it really didn't reveal too much, which I, I've been more vocal about it than normal on Twitter, but I've always felt like that trailer's just, I just hate trailers. And we've talked about it before on the podcast, how like it's part of our, like, not profession, but we have a podcast. We're TikTokers. We talk on social media. We have to watch trailers. We just can't be removed from the conversation that much. Um, but this, I feel like, didn't show much at all. Like, I mean, clearly, I think a lot of it is like a dream state, um, it, figment of his imagination. Like, I highly doubt joker and harley quinn have their own tv show that they're doing song and dances on but who knows maybe if, if they do that would be like cooler than otherwise like if this is all just a dream state the whole movie is kind of just in joker's mind like we kind of saw in the first one with like his relationship if, if they just really lean into that i'd probably think it's a little more lame if they take some bigger swings and i think that'd be cooler but i mean lady gaga i loved her in star is born walking phoenix i still love him and pretty much everything the trailer i thought was interesting i'm in I, i've i've made no you're joking. Yeah, I'm, I'm joking. We're, we're, I'm fully in. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to see what this ends up being. It's yeah, it's wild. It's obviously going to be very polarizing, just like the first one was. Come, thoughts? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously I'm excited because I do really, really like the first Joker. Um, big comic book guy in general. So like, I like the Joker character. Um, I just, this to me and, and the first Joker as well, uh, is just it feels a lot like it's a it's a stereotypical story about a man going insane and they just slap some makeup on him to to uh, make him Joker um, and, and I that's what like the first one feels like and I think they did it a well in a good way um, and at the very end he like kind of became the Joker with the scene of uh, uh, him and Robert De Niro and all that and I think that all worked for the first I'm I'm worried it's kind of reverting back to like now that he's in Arkham Asylum. Um, reverting back to like he doesn't really know what he is or who he is and he's going insane and all that jazz um and so i i just don't want it to kind of put us back to square one where he's like oh still becoming joker um i i, I kind of just want him to be joker at this point because uh and also like this iteration of joker this it's just not it's not even in question would just get like bodied by a Batman or any villain in general. Like it feels like he very much falls his way upwards. So I'd like, like I always, I always think of the Joker character as like a, a absolutely insane person, but is, are they actually insane? Um, or are they like methodical through and through and know exactly the next step of everything? They're just acting insane. Like you never really know because of how crazy they are. Um, mm-hmm. And it just feels like this person is this Arthur Fleck, Joaquin Phoenix character is just um, going insane and, and doesn't know. And you, and the, there's a lot of things in the first movie, like, uh, which I haven't watched in a while. I need to revisit, but um, like, is Zazie um, Beats character actually 
do does she actually know him i think that that is answered but it's like did like there's also the question of like once he gets in the fridge does he die and everything after that is like a dream sequence yeah um those stupid kind of questions but um i i just i like this trailer it doesn't reveal a ton and and like tyler said i think lady gaga is just like magnificent in a star is born um i never saw um house of gucci and i think those are like her two biggest roles mm -hmm. uh, but i i think she was like really really good in that so i think anything she's in i'm excited for and joaquin phoenix is amazing so i don't think like there's no way this movie gives us bad acting or, or, or uh, it could give bad writing, but I think just the idea behind it will le lend itself to to a good written movie. Um, I'm sure it'll look at like, I'm sure it does all of those things well, but will it, will it knock me off my feet and uh, be something I really love? I don't know. Um, but I, I like the trailer. I I'm excited for the movie. Um, um, I just, I wish I got a little bit more um, from it. Fair. Yeah, I mean, for me, like, as someone who doesn't love Joker 1, I will say doesn't love, like, I definitely don't hate Joker 1. I've got a three star. I don't, like, dislike it by any means, but it's not something, you know, it's not something I, I care for particularly. I think, I thought this trailer was all right. Like, I wasn't, I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm not joking, Tyler. I'm not <laughs> joking yet, but yeah, I, it's not something I'm, like, excited about, but I'm, you know, I'm fairly optimistic, I guess, more optimistic than I thought originally. So I thought the trailer, trailer looked okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, the next trailer we got uh, was for the the trilogy, um, Ty West trilogy, and that's Maxine, uh, the third film in kind of this whatever, uh, with Mia Goth. Thoughts? Interesting one. Um, a lot of polarized opinions online, mostly mostly positive. Uh, Tyler, what what do you think of it? Completely opposite of the Joker trailer in terms of I feel like this walked us through like three beat minutes. Beat just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah. Joker trailer is probably close in length, but I feel like Joker trailer gave us just these scenes that. Yeah. And yeah, Joker, like, it honestly looked charming, like the relationship, whereas like Maxine is like, it just felt like this is like, they gave the editor of this and said, here's the hour and a half, two hour movie, um, cut it up to be a spark notes, like synopsis version. Like, I feel like it just really yeah, walked yeah. through a lot of stuff about it. Um, so revealed a lot. Um, stylistically looks cool. I mean, like, I love like Elizabeth Debicki. Uh, Kevin Bacon's always good. Like, I think the cast is the best they've had yet in like these three movies also, which makes sense like they've gotten bigger and pearl and x were like filmed so like they were they were filmed back to back they're like oh we have more time to shoot let's do it whereas at this point they've had years go by or two years go by where it's built that following so they were able to get you know probably more budget from a24 and get these more actors attached but um the aesthetic and the vibe that they're going from the trailer worked for me really cool like i'm excited to see this it looks like a fun world to be a part of once again um but yeah i don't know i think it, I don't think it'll be my least favorite of the trilogy, but we'll have to see where, where it stacks up. And to me, like, I don't love or hate any of them. I think I give like X a three and like Pearl, I think maybe also three, maybe three and a half. I think I enjoy Pearl more than X, but it's like splitting hairs. They're basically just kind of both middle of the road for me, but I don't know. This looks, uh, I really like what I saw in the trailer. I just think I saw too much in the trailer. Yeah. I think that I wasn't a big fan of Pearl. I think I got like two, two and a half or three. Uh, I liked, um, What's it called? X. Uh, X. X, yeah. By texting, they like a three and a half. I think this trailer looks fine. I don't really care for the kind of, I guess, slasher. Um, John Reed General, I think the, the, the kind of mystery who don't approach and you know what they're basing us off. It's not something that I'm massively excited for. And I also think, like Tyler said, they literally just walk you through like the whole film or well, what we perceive to be. I think they show too much, but I'm not crazy about um any of these films really um i don't know cast is good though but i think cast is really really good come uh my big prediction is that uh maxine minx is the killer um that's that's, that's, that's my it's like a mystery murder mystery that's my big prediction she's the killer <laughs> um also i think the the maxine like uh the x um is obviously in reference to well first off triple uh, x porn she's a porn star um also in reference to like X, but I don't think that works because Pearl doesn't have an X. So is this like an X trilogy? I don't know. It's two of three, sure. But right now it's just one out of two have X's in it. So that's not really anything. Um, but trailer wise, yeah, showed too much, but I, I do like Mia Goth a lot. Um, shout out Halsey. Um, it revealed a lot, like you guys said. Uh, it's not something I'm going to like be waiting. Op I'll, I'll probably see it opening day just because like podcast wise. Uh, but it's not something I'm like amped for, waiting for. 
Um, I, I like I Pearl like and X. Thing. I think I have them both at three and a half. Um, but nothing. I, nothing. This is the sort of film. Like, if I wasn't doing a podcast, I would wait for this until this was on like streaming. I watched it. That yeah, it's not. I agree. Like, I agree. Uh, we also had a trailer for Speak No Evil, which I believe is the remake already <laughs> it's yeah fucking... i think 2022 is the, re- 20, was the I, so I've, have you guys seen it i have seen it now um, mm-hmm. it's fine it's cool it's interesting it's a really really interesting concept uh deeply disturbing uh, heavy-handed commentary but an, an important watch I would, I would definitely recommend people watch it what the fuck are we doing man like what the fuck are we doing it's is been it a, two is years it a foreign movie or yes no, danish it's, yeah, it's, it's a danish yeah oh yeah, yeah. okay a danish um, yeah now i'm seeing that i i yeah, that's it's stupid. it's it's a it's a cool film. It's well, it's something I recommend people watching. It's important, but yeah, what the fuck are we doing? Anything else? Because two years, so this comes this out movie. two years. This comes it's out two years after. Horror. Oh really? I thought it was a horror movie. It's it's that says horror. horror drama. It's yeah, but but so does how many films? I didn't watch it. Was, I, I, I didn't. Was watch it more it like a stupid. thriller <laughs> than like a as opposed to like horror? Yeah, I would say so. Um yeah, I'd say I'd say thriller. It's so it's this, an interesting watch. It's an interesting watch. Yeah, so the first one or the, the original released in summer of twenty twenty two. So not even this and this has a release it's date. Two of, years. Oh, this wait. has a release date of just right after summer twenty twenty four. So that means like right after whoever produced this movie saw it in theaters, they're like, all right, let's yeah. make like immediately. Like American one. So crazy turnaround. I James McAvoy. Heard. I'm fucking sick of you. You, pr- <laughs> you don't like I James like McAvoy. You, no, I do. That's why I don't want him to, to do this shit, you know? Yeah. So I think he's a really good actor. He's a waste of talent. Yeah. He's a waste of talent on a lot of things, man. He is. He's so good. Yeah. Like, so good. So, yeah, we talked so about Maxi, you know, it's like if, if we weren't doing a podcast, we'd probably wait for streaming. This is one where, like, even with a podcast, I think it's going to be such a nothing of a movie that unless, like, the early reactions yeah. are so massively great for it, they won't there's be. probably no way Wednesday I'm going to watch it. There's probably no way we're going to. So it's probably isn't even going to be like a review on the podcast. Like if anything, people who yeah. see, if any of us see it, it'll be like a, what have we been watching this week? Or I'm going to give my quick thoughts on this. Cause it's just, it just, I just don't think it's going to be anything of a movie. And then we also got a trailer for, I'll be honest. I don't actually know what this is. I didn't get a chance to watch this. Fly yeah. me to the moon with Char- mm-hmm. Scarlett Johnson and Channing Tatum. Yep. It's a rom-com about the space race. Uh, kind of like it's basically they're, they're being brought in to fix NASA's image after the public made up like or thought they faked the moon landings. They're trying to like fix that imagery or public image. So it's got Scarlett Johansson, Channing Tatum. Uh, it also has Woody Harrelson, Ray Romano's in here as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it it just looks like a, a, a fine movie. It's it's Apple Studios though. So like I feel like Apple generally has like a little higher quality standards than other streamers. Well, like, coming from streaming or is it going to the theaters? Uh, I believe it's going to theaters, but like Apple Studios yeah. is so who like, like bought the rights to produce this movie. So, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. And, I, I hope this has like the the goodwill that like No Hard Feelings does because I like Scarlett Johansson and Channing Tatum mm-hmm. and rom coms is always a good watch, even though I haven't watched No Hard Feelings yet. I will one day. I will. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I hope it. I hope it gets good vibes. Yeah, it's, it's a summer movie. movie. Hopefully, it's fun. You know. Mm-hmm. It's directed by Greg Berlanti, who also directed Love Simon, which I haven't seen, but I know K Meeks really loves that movie. But I'm disappointed looking at the Wikipedia now. So it was directed by Jason Bateman, who left the project halfway through because yeah. of creative differences. If Jason Bateman was directing yeah. this, I would be, That'd be way exciting. more excited for it because yeah, I, I love be Jason Bateman. And then has Ozark he directed anything movie. before? No, but he like executive produced Ozark, right? So like yeah, was, that's, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So he at least like had his influences, and I think like especially like in the later seasons of Ozark, he really got his hands dirty with it. Um, but I would have been very I, excited. To I do Bateman. think he was actually part of some of the crazy process of, of Ozark. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so so yeah. would have been more excited for that. But um, yeah, I don't think it. I don't think this would be a bad movie. Right. I just don't think it's gonna be like a more than a three movie. You know, Greg Berlanti was big involved in like the CW DC universe. So that's like all I know him from. And I, I can't say that's like, I love, I love arrow and the flash, those TV shows. And it was like Supergirl a little bit, but that was on NBC for a little gets messy, but uh, I love those. They're not like amazing. They're not perfect by any means. So I can't say like that makes me think, hell yeah, Greg Berlanti's here, you know? Mm. Cool. All right. We'll move on. CinemaCon. In Vegas. Was it in Vegas? Big I'm assuming it was Vegas. Yep. Vegas. Big week. Obviously, a lot of news. Uh, first thing, we'll do Disney. I think Cam wants to talk about Deadpool and Wolverine, which they showed 
nine minutes nine. off was that that one they showed nine, nine minutes off. yeah they showed nine minutes so they so they had footage of like deadpool wolverine captain america new world order kingdom of the planet of the apes alien romulus inside out which 35 we'll like 35 minutes that's of like the movie literally is on. what um, i think is over a third of the film some moana too. yeah so let's start with that inside out too. 35 minutes so seth you tweeted it and like mad about why would you want to watch a third of the movie i agree with you all this is all like CinemaCon is is to like get investors excited, like or get people excited, and therefore investors to like. I agree. Wanna, but it's like 35, 35 minutes. minutes is too much. Like I understand showing nine minutes of like, like a hype reel minutes. of like a movie, uh, yeah. but yeah, thirty five minutes at that point you've watched a third of the movie. Like mm -hmm. I don't know. I also don't know if I want to yeah. sit in like a. It's basically like it's not a shareholders meeting, but it's basically like a shareholders meeting in the sense that it's just to drive interest and that therefore increase it's revenue. Obviously, I don't know if that. I want to sit there and watch a third of a movie and then not watch the rest. Yeah. Like that's just which that's I, I tweeted about that too. But like hand up, I didn't know what CinemaCon was about. Didn't know it was for investors. But even with that, I feel like it's it's it was, it's, it's it's like it's not better like, because they had yeah, so many exactly. social media people there. So that's where I feel like it's like, mm -hmm. don't invite, like if you're like, I get cool. If your point is to show clips of the movies to get theaters and be like, yeah, we're going to put our prestige screens mm -hmm. for this, show it. Don't invite social media creators. Cause now we have all these social media people and critics and people who are like, are, have zero, zero, zero influence on like a theater like AMC mm -hmm. putting a movie. It's to in build that. hype and therefore to increase exposure for their movies. That's that's what it is. Right. So it's so not it's like, why necessarily are you showing, like, for yeah, but like soups and all these people seeing like so much of these movies. It's just like weird. Like it's yeah. Cinema I want to watch thirty five minutes of it. Like I, I would Hard not. Leave. You know, I actually yeah. think I'd leave. I don't. Um, know what's the point, you know. Weird. Yeah, uh, I do want to chat Deadpool and Wolverine because like a lot of things came out of like the jokes they're telling and things. And it's very it clearly is, it's, at, at least from the nine minute, clearly is like staying that hard R rating of Deadpool. Good. I think people were worried about what that. Rating? Obviously, hard R rating. Yeah, like, that like would be very, very dark for Disney if they go there. That's fair. Um, but like R rated movie. Um, mm -hmm. it's like very, very R rated and cursing and everything, and then you know a bunch of jokes at Disney's expense. That's what I want to talk about. I'm worried every joke in this movie is like, "Hey, Disney bought us now." I'm worried that's coming because it's a lot of those jokes. Movie. Like it's yeah. a it's I love the meta jokes in Deadpool and I love Deadpool. You kind of overuse them though. You can overuse I'm them. worried it's all hey we're not Fox anymore. Disney owns us because there's and or maybe it's just this real and you can make like you can make a bunch of jokes about it. I don't think that's an issue, but it sounds like like 99 percent of the jokes that were shown in this are like Kevin Feige loves me and like making jokes about that. I'll probably laugh in theater as I'm sure like a lot of people will, and I'm sure it's funnier. Like I think I think Ryan Reynolds is funny. Um, some people don't. I think he's funny. I love Hugh Jackman. Uh, I I think he's funny um, in, in roles that that he's trying to be. Um, like I I think they will deliver the lines a lot better than me reading it from like soups or discussing film or culture crave on on Twitter. Um, but it, I'm just worried like 99% of the jokes are going to be, Hey, Disney bought us. And this is funny because Disney doesn't normally let me say penis, you know? And yeah, so, um, that's, that's just one that I wanted to chat about Deadpools. I'm a little, a little like, nervous for that, but Kevin Feige saying like people on Twitter reacting. Cause he said like fucking awesome or something like that. It's like, See, like that, like I, that doesn't bother me. It's just, it's the Twitter it reaction. No, I think it's funny. It's like, haha, I can say that now. It's R rated. I think that's funny. I think but it's the Twitter, it's crazy. the Twitter yeah. reaction that that is uh, that. Yeah, that no, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and then and then like there was one joke that's like, why are you dressed like the Los Angeles Rams? That made me that would make me laugh. Or like if I weren't reading on Twitter, I think that's like not a bad joke. He's wearing yellow. He's wearing blue. It's like funny. Um, but I see it on Twitter now, and I'm like, ah. It's, it's not going to get. And then I see all the reply. I don't see th the issue is I don't see the joke. I see 99 replies of like, this sucks. This sucks. This sucks. And I'm like, ah, I, now I'm bummed it's more, but uh, uh, we'll see. I, I'm still excited for the movie. I still love Ryan Reynolds and, uh, and, and Wolverine um, or Hugh Jackman. We're, we're, we're hoping I'm hoping still. Anyone else want to go over anything in the Disney side of things? No, nah, I got nothing. Warner Bros. also um, got footage from Vicky 17. I love how the, the the promotion they used, like when they were showing photos, they just used the same image 
yeah, same back shit. next to each other. Like, I'm so know, sick of seeing that. Gotta finish. stop it, man. Um, but yeah, I uh, got some good reactions out of the early footage. Same with Furiosa, uh, Beetlejuice, and M Night's Trap. Uh, that will re now release one week later on August the 9th. Film follows a father and daughter who attend a pop concert and realize they're at the center of a sinister event. Go M Night, excited for that. Also, just a side note, uh, saw the, the trailer for um his daughter's film, uh, The Watchers. Watch is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that in cinemas yeah. again. The other day. I think that looks. Yeah. I think it looks really good. Like I'm actually really mm -hmm. excited for that. I'm just saying that. Here's the thing about M Night. I don't love him. I'm not as hateful as George. I think he's made a lot of shit. George movies isn't as hateful as he believes. He just does. <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, that's you know. fair. Uh, I like. I I think he's made a lot of shitty movies. I'm not going to back M Night. Oh, but I, I think anytime. Yeah, I think the, the happening. I don't like the happening. I'm sorry. The Last Airbender, After Earth. Those are three movies I give like a total of like six out of a six out of three hundred oh, for. Dang. All right. Yeah, but then the rest but of After Biden, Earth yeah. and The Last Airbender are bad, man. I understand I, the I happening think... has this like cult following. After Earth and out the Last Airbender after Earth is, suck. Uh, out of the After Earth is like that bad but i also uh, i get a two star i won't defend it i don't really like after Earth very much i haven't no, seen like, but uh um, i i will give him credit in the sense that like i think he he makes and i i haven't seen like people hate old i haven't seen that uh i he makes interesting movies like now at least like knock at the cabin has an interesting concept it's it's pretty straightforward especially for him um, like split is an interesting concept and glass and, and unbreakable like i i like that like yeah he gives you he gives you an interesting concept so i think for that he deserves some credit uh yeah paramount also footage of gladiator 2 a lot of reaction from this uh mm -hmm. fighting a rhino hell yeah Pascal and paul muskell dudes all, will see all, this all and say hell yeah. Hell, <laughs> yeah hell yeah um yeah paul muskell and uh and uh pedro pascal bloody up having a face off cool excited for this hell yeah. very hell yeah like cam said if couldn't give a fuck uh all the cast members in this like everyone is in this. It's, it's like the old this, phase this to me is like this to me is going to be like a better Adam Sandler movie in the sense that like John Krasinski actually seems like he cares about it, so he made like a competent movie. But it's just a bunch of his buddies hanging out. It's Steve Carell, it, Matt Damon, Ryan Reynolds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's right. just a bunch of buddies being pals. Like, and and that that to me is fine. That's fun. But the that's what Adam War. Sandler movies are just shitty. Before hey. Civil War, they showed like a behind the scenes of If. And you don't need to show trailers of if all you need to do is show like the behind the scenes I just showed before Civil War, where it showed like the side by side of Steve Carell's character in the movie and Steve Carell in the booth voicing it and just like yeah. seeing his joy and just Steve Carell being that guy that we all love. Like that's all you need to show for if to make him be like, fuck, I hated this everything I saw about this movie, but maybe now I want to see it just because Steve Carell smiling and doing his like Steve Carell voice. I was mm -hmm. like, hell yeah, Steve Carell. Yeah, love kind of also. Also, they had like a two minute or a clip or like right before the trailer released of Ryan Reynolds and then uh, Randall Park, like making the gym from the office joke. That's funny. Like, that's good stuff. That's not I, I like that about it. You know, it seems like a good time. The movie might not be great, but I think the only thing we have to go off on John Krasinski right now is A Quiet Place. And I don't think he's missed on either of those so i'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt here agreed haven't seen i didn't love the second a quiet place i'll be honest it's I'll not as good but it, i didn't i i like it still um yeah so uh also we got some transformers one is that the animated one film? yeah it's the animated movie stacked gas i i saw nothing but good things but i did see um uh soup said it's gonna take some use to getting uh chris hemsworth as optimus prime because i think uh what's his name is a what's his name has like a monopoly yeah. on optimus prime um i i can't remember who voices him but that's such a that's such a good that's not it <laughs> um but that's such a good optimus prime voice whoever voices him in the michael bay movies um uh, and then just the movies in general that uh i, I yeah it's probably going to take some getting used to with uh with chris hemsworth Cool. We also got some info Peter, on Peter Cullen. Peter Cullen. Yeah. We also got some info on, on Smile 2. Um, I believe it's like a, a singer and her fans. Yeah, it's following like a pop star who got the, who the gets smile. The, whatever. I think Smile 1 was shit. And George isn't here, so I can say that a lot. I'm going to be And Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Also don't care. I haven't seen the other Sonic. Any 
and put on I don't Sonic hate the Sonics, and, man. I, like, I don't either. I don't either. George hates them. I don't hate them. They they are through and through movies. I give benefit of the doubt because like my niece really likes them, and and that's who they're made for. So I can't sit here and be like, this is complete shit. When I watch them with her, she's like, hell yeah, and I say, all right, mm-hmm. yeah, sure. You know, that, that's the the silly thing about that's George. the best. George, we I love you. Get. Happy birthday, George. We love you. Um, but he said this before he about movies him. that I always think is so silly. Where he's like. He he always said, and he said it several times in his podcast. Like it's so clearly made for kids, and I just always chuckle. Like, it's the, like, it's the Percy are, Jackson. Yeah. It's the yeah. Percy Jackson. Percy Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. Percy Percy Jackson, Jackson I think, think is young adult that doesn't hit. Yeah, like, I'm like, I, so I, I like said the art art movie. This shit is so childish. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I like uh, Sonic One and Two. They're they're like two and a half for me. So like I'm not. Yeah, gonna, they're fine. Like that's the best glowing review I can give. Is like they're fine. It's, it's not so offending easy. anyone. Been it's the most just... annoying movie ever, and it, well, yeah. it's not. So yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Uh, David Chazelle sets Ryan Dredd's film, new film, set in a prison. I'm going to move on because I don't want any more out of jail. Yeah. Fucking <laughs> prison jokes. That's like Twitter's favorite joke right now. Mm-hmm. He was. He it made was a film. It was like first. 17 months ago. He made oh, a film. Yeah. Now, the reason the the director jail thing is because there actually was, and we covered on this podcast, like news like six not. months ago, where it said yeah. like he's only going to like studios aren't giving him money and he's going to have to write other people's films. So like there, there really was like news that said like he wasn't getting the opportunity yeah, yeah, yeah. to direct movies anymore but now he's, well, he's back yeah, he's fine. He's back. i think he's producing this as well so i don't know if that means yeah i think he is. how much of his own money that'll be but but yeah he's back okay uh, next, 2025 i think it comes out or maybe 2026 i don't know uh, did we get released it? i didn't even see we got a year just a year um, yeah, we didn't know. get much yeah yeah uh teams written in circles the last ronin r-rated live action tmt movie uh tmnt movie should i say cool who knows oh yeah so related to mutant mayhem. Mayhem. say again what? is this related no. to mutant mayhem no, okay. no. It's, live action, it's, it's, R, it's live action it's live action it's r-rated um i believe it's uh i'm trying to i haven't like read the last ronin it's like a comics run that they had um i haven't read it but i know it's uh i know it's like a very popular story um i believe it did you see the reaction when discussing from what tweeted this it was one of their like highest people, engagements ever That's oh crazy. yeah people are amped for this uh, I didn't realize yeah. how big it like would be. You know, it was crazy. Okay. I believe it's just Raphael. Uh, uh, Raphael is like the last um, turtle remaining after like, Shredder's grandson. Grandson oh. killed him. Yeah, an R-rated, like get a dark and gritty. You can make anything R-rated, and I'll probably be more excited for it because, like, it gives you the opportunity to be a little more dark and gritty. Um, even though movie studios you can do that with pg-13 just don't have them say fuck every other line like you can do this lord of the rings apparently not yeah 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 apparently uh, our rating and say hell yeah hell yeah yeah. i will Uh, i'm the last admin a new movie got some news that batista is uh voicing the villain cool no idea never seen the show don't care i like other cinema kind of news george yeah true George loves it. Uh, Saw 11 has been delayed to September 26, 2025. Was that, I don't even know how long they got delayed by. Was it a long time? Like a just... year. It was supposed to be September this year. It was supposed to come out. Oh, okay. But I so, really love Saw 10, so take take their time, because I think they revitalized a franchise that I literally thought had no potential being saved. So yeah. try and keep the momentum going. Yeah. Bill Lord and Chris Miller's Project Hail Mary, starring Ryan Gosling, will release in 2026 in theaters. The film follows a man who wakes up from a coma, uh, afflicted with amnesia and soon remembers he was sent 12 years away from earth to save humanity cool dude dudes will see a movie with ryan gosling and say hell yeah hell, hell yeah, yeah. It, it, it's based on a book written by the guy who wrote the martian and i think the martian's hmm. great so i haven't I seen the martian so I can't yeah. comment. but and I've, I've read the book the martian too really liked it and then also this you read the new, book wow yeah That's read crazy. Book, Ooh. Ooh. and i just threw this in also as a teaser for like we're gonna do before the fall guy we're gonna do a ryan gosling episode so if you want to see that Comment down below. Let us know if you want to see Ryan. Like, go through Ryan Gosling's filmography. When is the Fall Guy? Island. People have seen it. It's soon. I'm, see, I'm it's seeing it. On yeah, it came out South by Southwest, but it's like a month away. Yeah, so. I'm seeing it. No, I'm seeing it next. Yeah. Oh shit, is that next week? I'm seeing it. Fall May third here so, in the U.S. If you want us to do a Ryan Gosling here. special, yeah. comment below. Let us know. Oh yeah. Uh, other news: uh, Margot Robbie is now producing movies based on The Sims and Monopoly. I don't like it. No, so here's weird. the thing: it's more. I, this is my question. It's Margot Robbie's production company. So does she like have like a ton to do with that? I I don't know. Like is she gonna have any say, or is she just like, hey, I made a trillion dollars on Barbie. Here's ten of it. Like you know, is it's she a, doing anything kind of with weird. it? 
choices though. I think the Sims and Monopoly mm-hmm. movie. Just it's just it. it's just Mattel, right? Just, are, are these Mattel? Just, I gotta assume it's I, just I actually, like the Barbie pipe. Oh, that's actually a good question. I think you might be I think Monopoly I think, might be. I don't think the Sims is. Yeah, I think Monopoly. I know is, like I know, I know uh I think it's gonna be. I think Monopoly has a chance to be a more interesting movie than The Sims, but The Sims has such a massive cult following. People who like are fans. These are money makers. This is the The thing. Sims will be huge. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's like, you know, it could have been some more interesting projects. These are just money makers. Let's be honest. Like Mm -hmm. they're just huge IP. But whatever. Uh, Other news. uh, Big one this week. Francis Ford Coppola's Megalopolis is being deemed by. Several many studio execs to be too experimental, not commercial enough to acquire and spend 100 million on marketing. We did get news, however, a couple of days ago that it will debut in Cannes, uh, Cannes Film Festival, and will debut in competition as well. Um, common occurrence uh, for someone like Francis Ford Coppola should be able to to get the funds required. I think it's also, in my eyes, a good sign that studios that's uh, deeming it's too experimental because fuck them and their boring taste. I think Francis Ford Coppola is cooking up this something special on Netflix. Shut up! It's Don't a, put it into the world. Yeah. Don't it's pull forever. that into the world. It's gonna uh, I need on this Netflix. on the big screen, man. This is oh no, uh, George Lucas, what are you doing? You yeah, know, finance body. You've done it before. Find out to your friends. Fuck him. Now, uh, yeah. So I mean, this is something we've seen many times before. It's either going to get a really good reaction at Can and and get a get a good uh production budget like or uh, marketing budget is what he's looking for i can't remember uh it's, like, it's already funded by, it's by him funded. it's already yeah. funded by him but it's for marketing um, it's either gonna get a great reception and then easily be funded or it's not gonna get your great recep- reception and then it's where it could win bond deal Netflix. it's in competition could? if it wins that's what deal. i'm saying like it, it could yeah. it could be great that is the palm deal isn't it Khan? yeah yep yep oh, exactly. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah um but yeah i mean it's something we've seen many times before. Let's hope it is. Uh, it's not a uh, Netflix release. That would um, wouldn't be great, would it? Let's be honest. So, uh, hoping I think like Searchlight was a rumor. Maybe that could be really cool. Who knows? Um, a new Blair Witch movie is in the works at Blumhouse. Blumhouse are insistent that just running their company into the ground. Don't know what they're doing. I also think that the original. Hell no. Hell no. I also think the original Blair Witch is shit anyway, so they ain't got much competition. But it's a massive, massive film that's very beloved, so I don't know what they're doing with this, but who knows. Kit Harrington says that the Jon Snow series is no longer happening. Didn't even know that was a thing to begin with, to be honest. I had no it's idea. It's one of those things that got announced, um, and then, loads like, of nothing ever came. Like This got announced when I was in college, like three years ago oh. at this point. Nothing There's ever came from it. Like, um, um, I like Kit Harrington. You got to move on, man. I think I think Kit Harrington's got to find some. He's he he is not going anywhere after Jon Snow right now. He's kind of the Black Knight uh, in Marvel, but like not really because Blade's never going to get made. <laughs> um, but True. and he probably also won't be in it if it does get made. So like, you got to do something, John or Jon Snow. You got to do something, Kit Harrington. Got to do something, man. Oh, and just also, sit there all day. Quick comment about like Blade. So like. The- coca-cola and marvel have like his collab now and they got the yeah. at the cinema con they gave out like um coca some of the coke bottles had blade on it so i think a lot of people are expecting to hear news about blade obviously we didn't get any and then thunderbolts the title has an asterisk by it, oh, it has an asterisk, that's, the, yeah. that's the official name we'll talk about the asterisk once the movie comes out that just means only one thunderbolt gonna, is gonna survive right like they all die and there's one left. Oh, so like no, I think it's going to it's gonna get like a name change at like the end of the movie to like the new Avengers or the, the oh, Dark Avengers okay. or something. That makes yeah, more sense than I thought. Happen. I thought they would that's all die and it's like, happen. oh, it's only Thunderbolt instead of No, that, that, that is, maybe that is it, but I've seen a bunch of things. It's going to get changed to like the Dark Avengers or something at the end of it. Hmm. That's really hmm. all I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Jeremy Allen White was cast as Bruce Springsteen in Scott Cooper's The Road to Nowhere. And initially, I was helping with the rundown, putting this in there. And initially, I thought that was like adding into the Bob Dylan movie, but no, there's a separate movie. So he's Bruce Springsteen in his own movie. Um, yeah. Musical biopics aren't going away anytime soon. Uh, it's pretty clear. And they're all kind of meh. You know, there's just whatever. There's, I don't know. I mean, Timothy Chalamet is great. Love him. So we'll see how his, his uh, uh, Bob Dylan movie is but yeah jeremy Allen white's cool too and he's now bruce springsteen so i think he can pull off that aura but yeah. we'll see how it goes in, a, in another another be- musical biopic which is just having they're having a, a, another moment they've always been here but they're having a moment right now i'd say especially i think 
maybe this is the consequences of Austin Butler winning the Golden Globe and and being an Oscar nominee that uh, we're going to get a resurgence because the backlash like Bohemian Rhapsody was pretty strong once that got Rami Malek as Oscar win. They're like, oh, it's cool it a bit, and then now we're just fired back up again after that like, two year break. But um, yeah. but yeah, we uh, not know that stepped away, but that's all we had for the episode today. I mean, we're only at about three hours, so shorter episode this week. Three um, hours, by the way. I had no idea. Yeah, some good I, dude, I have plans today, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Sorry. even know what a real quick draft is Thursday. I know we're not going to film it after this, but uh, I don't even know what it will be, but we have that on Thursday, or we'll, we'll, oh, we will we'll have a draft of some sorts. And then Friday, we're going to be reviewing Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. So Psycho is going to be a review this week for patrons. So make sure you go check that out if you uh, want to join our Patreon. We talked about a lot of the perks throughout the episode, but there's a lot of cool stuff. Um, and then our executive producers, Stefan Johnson, Sean Morales, and Stefan Nieberich. Shout out to all of you for being executive producers. Thank you all so much for letting us do what we do. But that was Real Talk episode 83. We discussed at length Alex Garland and all other fun stuff. And we will see you on Thursday with our unknown Real Quick Draft. Peace out. Go Tiger Woods this week. <laughs>